All right, big show tonight. Let's fucking do it. I'm about to spit About the rules for the show Yeah, this is it Better prepare Your anus is gon' get insane Two is out of his mind Dusty Smith's his name When Joe Ross drops It's time to begin You talk about chose And make fun of them Then the trash word, oh lord The world's on fire Beyond parody shit It's getting so tired But they just bullshit You know it won't make you feel like dying Cause they touch more children Than an OBGY And from zero to heroes Just for one day It's the world's greatest show When it's coming your way it's time for the dusty show it's time for the dusty show we all have fun and we never grow old it's time for the dusty show it's time for the dusty show it's time for the dusty show we all have fun and we never grow old it's time for the dusty show hey what's up everybody welcome to the world's finest news program it's time for the dusty show and hell yeah we're back we missed friday's show not gonna lie to you i had kidney stones kidney stones god damn it you guys know kidney stones is genetic and uh, i'm so lucky my mom suffers with them and my dad also suffer with them so ever since i was like six i've been getting the kidney stones and don't be like dusty drink lemon juice shut the fuck up nothing works you're all liars the internet's a liar tried everything on the fucking planet does it work uh, so what you gonna do? Uh, and also, my ear been fucking with me. Feels like my eardrum is partially collapsed. I got old man problems, but hey, at least I'm back uh, for an amazing, amazing show tonight. And uh, thank you for joining me. And also, you know what happened? So those of you who watch the show know my favorite game of all time: Fallout. Fallout. I played all the Fallouts. I beat Fallout Four. Like five or six times i beat fallout three two vegas fallout uh what is it 76 the one that's online i i, I got to the end of that mother all of it all of it so they came out with the fallout show and i was like hell yeah how could it be any better than a fallout show let me uh move over and show you because i got a picture how could it be any better than making a fallout show well somehow they found a way folks so uh, I only have one actor on the entire planet that I actually like. I hate all the rest of them. Johnny Depp, fuck him. Uh, Chris Hansworth, L. Evans, uh, Chris Rat, all of them. None of the Chris's. hate all fucking actors. They all suck. One, there can only be one, Walton Goggins. That's my man. Anything Walton Goggins is in, I'm like, fuck yes. Hell yeah. This guy, best actor in the world. Love him. Want to have... I can't say the things I want to do because I'm not gay. Anyway, they put him in the show. The fucking best casting ever. And I was like, I know they're going to fuck this shit up. Here he is. Uh, he plays this badass ghoul. Put him in this fucking show. And I was like, I know they're going to fuck this shit up. I didn't even watch any of the previews for it. No trailers, nothing. Get out of there. Get, get. No trailer because I didn't want to have it spoiled for me. Uh, so I binged watch the whole thing, folks amazing it was fucking amazing and now i'm depressed because it's gonna be like more than a year before i get any more of this but holy god was it good just give walton goggins all the emmys all, all the oscars i know you can't get oscars for tv show. give them the fucking oscars i don't care and they had this goddess this girl oh my god she's so beautiful they picked like the best looking girl in the world the best actor in the world just so much win and uh I know for me, like, it's probably because I got nostalgia. I'm like this, watching it. Yeah, me watching Fallout in my Fallout suit. It's exactly how I feel. Like, everything, I recognize everything. It's so amazing. So anyway, uh, please forgive my exuberance, but I was so pleased to binge watch that show. Uh, so I had a good time. Had a great time. I actually watched um, Star Wars 8. 8, because I think there's nine of them, right? I watched seven last time I talked to you guys. Now I've watched eight in 3D, and it was all right. It was, I've seen it before, but it was all right. It was. right. I'm starting to get the 
idea of why people like it okay i'm not that big of a fan of it but it was okay better than the jar jar binks bullshit and uh so watch that it's pretty fun so anyway uh, all in all pretty good pretty good weekend something bad did happen though i want to address it real quick at the top of the show um so you guys remember my brother uh, who was a giant fucking psychopath who disowned me at applebee's uh made a big stink I hadn't talked to him in like 20 years and he came to town he disowned me at applebee's we had to leave this restaurant and everything so then i saw him uh thanksgiving and i was nice you know i've literally never said a unkind word to my brother not one not a single unkind word um so we got along okay at thanksgiving and then he messaged me and uh and tried to uh get me involved in his scheme to murder my brother-in-law who's in prison for uh beating up my sister yeah it's wackiness anyway uh basically i told him uh yeah i'm not going to help you murder anybody please don't try to include me in your murder plans otherwise i'm going to turn you into the cops because uh, i don't want to be in jail for murder uh anyway he blocked me oh, i hate you i hate you for not helping me murder people I, you're not my brother you're a cowardly piece of shit which is true i am uh anyway so then last week he messaged ken my cousin ken who is uh staying with me right and he's like, hey, Ken, are you still staying with Dusty? Ken's like, yeah. And he's like, what is you guys' address? Nothing bad. I'm just going to prank Dusty by sending him some tampons for his bleeding liberal vagina, uh, which is bullshit. Okay. Uh, he's nuts. So he, he's either trying to kill me. If I die, my brother, John Thompson killed me if I die. Um most likely, since he's a cowardly piece of shit, he's probably just trying to get me, like, um, swatted or something. Something bad, though. He's trying to put me in fucking danger, folks. And um, I am not playing with that bullshit, okay? And, and, like I said, I never have even spoken a negative word to my brother. Like, when he wanted to go meet his wife, who was from Russia, I literally paid for his trip to Russia. I've done nothing but help this guy his entire life. And... But he watches this show, and I guess he's so angry that people like me, that people watch this show, that people, some people look, respect me and look up to me. And um, I'm assuming it has something to do with this micro penis, his tiny baby dick. He feels so masculine because he's never had a real job, and he basically is a house husband, and his wife wears the pants of the family. And sometimes men like that, they want to feel more manly because their man has been taken away from them. So they have to act out, pretend like they're badass, and, um, and, and, and hate on other people, right? So... Look, John, if you're watching me, don't do it, man. Like, just leave me the fuck alone. It, it, you leave me alone, and I will leave you the, alone. I promise you. But if you don't leave me alone, you're not going to like it, man. I don't know if you found out where I live yet, but I know where you live. Know where your wife works. She makes a lot of money, and I'm crazy also, okay? You want to fuck around and find out? Do it, bro. But I would just move on, find yourself a hobby, take up golf or something, dude. All right. Well, that's all I got to say to you. But don't ever even hint you're going to put me or my family or my animals, any of us in fucking danger, dude. All right. Because I ain't fucking around with you. And all right. Let's move on the show, folks. I got a, well, I guess I got a big show. Uh, I don't know. Wonder if anything's happened. Obviously, uh, somebody else put the show together. Oh, look how much stuff there is. Oh my God, huge fucking show tonight. Wow, that must have taken a lot of time and effort for whoever put this together. I bet that took forever. Anyway, glad it wasn't me. So uh, let's jump in together for the first time, seeing this and see what we have in store for us. Hell yeah! Uh, starting us off tonight. Oh, let me. Do the uh, begging for money. Yeah, hey, I did my taxes. I was going to go to jail, and then I was like, uh, maybe I shouldn't go to jail. I went and had lunch with Jeff, and Jeff was like, are you serious about not paying your taxes and going to jail? And I was like, yeah, man, I don't want to pay to kill kids. And he was like, Dusty, du you are way too pretty to go to jail, dude. You know what they'll do to you in jail, okay? You got no shot. And I'm like, it's federal prison. It's not the same thing. He's like, dude. Don't go to jail. And I was like, all right, fine. So uh, I guess uh, I'm going to pay my taxes. I filed them. I did that part. I haven't paid them yet, but I guess I might. Anyway, uh, I owe a lot of money, it turns out. <laughs> I was supposed to be paying it all year, and I didn't. So anyway, um, 
Super Chats, live out of the show. There is a uh, dollar sign somewhere in, in somewhere around this universe. And you'll find it. Uh, click on the dollar sign. Donate money to the show. The more you donate, the more chance I get a question. I read every single thing at both halftime and the end of the show. So help me and the floating cats out. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you in advance. I love you. And all right, let's go ahead and get the show fucking going, folks. It's time for some Chud Watch. Chud Watch. Woo. 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 Talking Woo. about Chud Watch. We got the world shows. And then what do we do? Red flag. Woo. Hands to the air. And first off, another week. Another week of the orange goof. Uh, that's now Trump is flip-flopping everywhere. Yeah, he got Roe versus Wade overturned. He bragged about it, said he was going to do it. Now it's overturned, and women are pissed. They're like, hey, we don't want to have our rapist babies. We don't want to force children to have their daddy's incest kids. Like, it seems bad. So then he's like, all right, take it back to the States. Take it back to the States. And he can't seem to pick a side whether he's against abortion for abortion who knows so they just ask him directly hey uh which side of this issue are you on and i'm sure it's trump so he directly answered the question right excuse me please just a follow-up over the over the last few decades mr president you have both considered yourself pro-choice and pro-life which one is it but you know exactly which one it is and when i was in new york and when i was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan. You know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth, Ninth month. There Excuse me. That's right, folks. I hope that was clear. Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. It's obvious what side I'm on, even though it's not. You're on whatever side you think it'll get you elected, clearly. And uh, then Trump zombies, goddammit, they were out in full force this week. Starting us off, drunk Trump zombies uh, out there with the Marjorie Trotter Queen's boyfriend. Let's see how they embarrass themselves this week. They're just walking to oh, okay. see my friends. Oh, yes. there you go. She's got her white claw. Everybody, this, this is the did section I, right here. Did I not get the memo out here no, or something? But this is the section. My goodness. All right. Well, well, hey, what should President Trump do on day one, by the way? Let's talk a little bit of policies real quick. Uh -huh. Day one, he is going to take over everything, and he's going to make America better Oh, again. my God. So uh, drunk, so stupid. Not only can they not think of one thing they wanted to do. Except for just repeat the catchphrase. She can't even remember the catchphrase. Uh, might want to lay off, Lush. I like that. Better. Border. Better. Close Border. the border. Yeah, close the border, even though he specifically uh, made it to where the Republicans decided not to do that. And that, folks, I know you're going to be shocked. This gentleman, for some reason, angry about gas prices? What? Why? Here we go, everybody. You're going to come with me. Do not try this at home, ladies and gentlemen. So I just climb on up. Climb on up like an elevator. Oh boy. Just you're not in a box. And then what do I hold on to? Dear life. There we go. Dear life. Okay. Smile for the camera. And then I would just jump. I'm not going to just step over and, and then have fun. Oh, okay. Sock interior and everything. How tall is this? How high am I right now? Uh, to the roof rack, it's 11 feet. 11 feet in the air. Can we get a wide? Smallest penis ever. Good God, dude. You are textbook. But yeah, let's take us back to the COVID days where everybody was stuck at home and gas prices were low. Make these douchebags feel better. And uh, then, folks, did you know that Trump is basically Jesus? It's true. Your t-shirt says Jesus Christ 24. Yes. Is he on the ballot? He's not on the ballot, but Trump is so doggone close. So close. You believe so close, except for, you know, Jesus said you had to give all your shit away and that it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to fit through an eye of a needle and turn the other cheek, loving your, all that stuff. If you just forget everything Jesus ever said or did, Trump, just uh, hair away. If America is a Christian country. We were founded on Christianity, sir. And I still believe it's a Christian country. Well. 
regardless if it was it shouldn't be and that this guy I want you to know Trump is basically Superman. He's both Jesus and Superman at the same time. Trump is the man. He's the man. You know, that's why I'm here. What do you love most about the president? Oh, the way he's so strong about everything. Mm, so strong. He's like Superman, right? Um, yeah, well, he says Superman right there. But no, but yeah, he's definitely, you know, he needs to be up there. You know, at least he's speaking the truth. Yeah, that's Trump right. speaking the truth and so strong, so manly, so physically imposing. Rip the shreds, alpha specimen Donald Trump. And then, folks, I know it's going to shock you, but Trump has a lot of criminals that seem to like him. Uh, case in point, uh, this guy. Okay, this is sober. I'm on probation. Oh, okay. <laughs> this show just gets better and better, doesn't it? Uh, I did tell you as a prisoner. This show gets even better. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something about Trump. Okay. He's the best, man. Okay. He did the best that he could do from people that he had to go forward on. I agree. So for because the first, if you got some shit in the back, if you got some shit behind you, you can't say I did it, right? Well, for the first two Why years, Trump hang on a second. He hasn't been in office for five years. Hey, Moon, Danny, hang on a second. <laughs> for the first two years, he had a Congress that you know, wasn't working with him. Fucking water, my mouth is dry. <laughs> you can have it if you want uh, to. I don't, I like taking shit from people. <laughs> I like taking shit. Super tough guy. This doughy fucking city's digging two decades. I like taking shit from people. That's why I like Donald Trump. He's a criminal like I am. A great, great selection of zombies this week. And we've got more, folks. It doesn't matter what he does. At least they're honest about it. That's how badly America wants a culture change. So, 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 so just to sum up, you would, you would support him for president, even if he's convicted in classified documents. You support him for president, even though you believe he contributed to an insurrection. You support him for president, even though you believe he's lying about the last election. You'd support him for president, even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes, correct? Yeah, me and 51% of America. Yeah, Governor, thanks for even that's not true, obviously. Maybe 51% of conservatives. But even then, that would not be a good answer. Yeah, I don't care if he rapes my wife, murders my children. He could flay my children right in front of me. Roast their flesh on an open fire. Eat it in front of me. And then ejaculate on their dead bodies. I would still vote for him. Me and 51% of the country. I got to do it because of the country. Just good God. Not a cult, though, folks. Not in any way whatsoever. And then, more true tellers from Trump supporters, uh, which is rare. Doesn't matter what he does, I'm going to vote for him. It really doesn't matter what he does. Doesn't matter what he does, and I assume a lot of this crowd can agree with me. Yeah. Well, what if he uh, had a political opponent killed, like his, his lawyer said, that uh, he would be immune from? Vote for Trump. Still voting for Trump, even if he had a political opponent I'll make, killed? I'll make it clear for you. I don't care what he does. I'm voting for Trump. And I think majority of this line is too. Even if he had a political opponent killed. Absolutely. Doesn't matter. I'm voting for Trump. Well, Doesn't matter what he does, folks. No morals. No standards. They stand for absolutely nothing. It's a cult. He's their god. And he could do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Burn it all down. And hey, super cool. That is what America deserves. So I'm a little bit with you on that one. And, uh, and folks, yeah, he's not even president anymore. Why are we still doing this? Why are we still wa wasting taxpayer dollars? Why are we still giving this guy like Goldberg entrances? Look at this fucking shit. Money well spent. Talking about defunding the fucking police. As they bankrupt us on this silly fucking bullshit. Criminals love other criminals. That's for goddamn sure. Pigs love pigs. Meanwhile, this is the man. This is the Superman. This is not a doctor photo, folks. This is what he looks like. This is the alpha specimen. The best of us all. Look at him. This Humpty Dumpty potato fuck. Can literally murder us all and they'll still vote for him. Don't give a shit. Nothing matters to these people. Crazies have taken over the asylum. Meanwhile, I hate posts like this that say Trump is scared. Do something to him and then tell me he's scared. Actually hold him accountable for some shit. But the reason I'm playing this is how uh, butt-fucked his whole message is. How backwards it is. Let me play it. 
At what point are the actions of a sitting president using lawfare and weaponization against his opponent for purposes of election interference considered illegal? But I believe- What the fuck? Like, literally, that is the opposite of what you're claiming every day. You're out there saying what Biden doing to me is illegal. Nothing a president does is illegal. You're literally going to the Supreme Court saying that the president should have blanket immunity for whatever they do. They can't even be a good president unless they have blanket immunity for everything. Then by your own logic, Biden can do anything to you. Nothing is illegal. Pick a fucking lane. But once again, it doesn't matter. He can speak out of both sides of his mouth. He can say two completely opposite things at the same time. And as they've just said, they don't care. Nothing he can do will make them stop voting for him. Even photo op after photo op, they fake everything, folks. Remember, he went to Chick-fil-A, and uh, there were all these black people there. And they're like, we love Trump. Just completely organic grassroots just happens. No planning whatsoever. Fox News is all over it. I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Uh, we support you. Uh, we support love you. Love okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a... Please. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, look at that, black folks. Love Trump. She made it. Tell my mama I made it. Thank you. Tell my mama I made it. You made it, yeah. An orange fat con man rubbed up against you. Your mama's so proud. But yeah, obviously it was staged. Uh, this woman... Uh, Michaela Montgomery runs a conservative group, was a Republican Party intern, and former Blazant City director, all staged photo ops, of course. It's all a show for the dumbest among us. I don't even know how they try to fool dumb people. They don't even give a shit. Why are you making so much effort towards people that don't care? And then here's what tripped me up about, here's what trips me up about uh, conservatives. They all pretend like one of the things that they care about the most is manliness. Alpha males. Badass, big, swinging dick motherfuckers who don't take no shit from nobody. They only elect beefcake, manly, alphas. Yet almost every single person they elect are the most beta, sissy bitches the human mind can conceive of. Case in point, Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House. Here he is walking off stage from Trump, thinks about walking in front of Trump briefly, and then thinks better of it, gets behind him, is so scared of Donald Trump that he won't even touch him. Watch. See if you can find a level of beta greater than this. He's like, oh, oh, oh I can't walk in front of you. Go ahead, Mr. Trump. I, oh, I almost hook her head in his back. I dare not touch daddy. He might be offended. Just God damn it. The biggest bottom bitches in the world. Crazy. And uh, all the Trump supporters are like that. They want to be submissive. They want to lay down and get butt fucked by daddy. The whole macho alpha male thing is a bad cover. Nobody's buying it. We see right through it. And uh, meanwhile... Apparently, Trump fell asleep uh, during his trial today. Yeah, another week, another Trump trial. This week, he's going on trial for hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Apparently, he took it out of his uh, campaign funds, which is illegal. Yeah, really illegal, to be honest with you. Uh, so he's on trial for that. Apparently, can't even be bothered to stay awake for it. Yeah, I have to ask, you guys have been, at the Times, have been live blogging uh, this uh, event. And 40 minutes ago, you wrote an observation that, that uh, I, I was very surprised. Trump appears to be sleeping. His head keeps dropping down and his mouth goes slack. Tell us about that. Well, Jake, he appeared to be asleep. And, you know, he repeatedly his, his head would, would fall down. There have been other moments in other trials, like the, uh, the Agent Carroll trial, which was around the corner uh, in January, where he appeared very still and seemed as if he might be sleeping. but. Then he, then he would move. This time, he didn't pay attention to a note that his lawyer, Todd Blanche, passed him. His jaw kept falling on his chest, and his mouth kept going slack. Now, uh, you know, sometimes people do fall asleep during court proceedings, but it, it's notable given the intensity of this morning and a lot of what was being argued. Yeah, that's rather surprising. What was? Yeah, I have to ask you. Why guys is that rather surprising? Of... He's like a hundred, and so I'm guessing this picture must be. AI, I don't know. It looks very similar to the picture I made for uh, 
for the show. Let's see the picture I made for the show. AI put some cum on his lip for me, which is uh, always the best. Here, let, let me go back to my thing. Here we go. Big, big, bigger picture. There we go. AI put a little cum on his lip. I don't know why. I said make him drooling, and AI was like, best I could do is cum on his lip. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm out of time. Whatever, AI. We'll go with the cum on the lip. At least people will probably click on it because they'll be like, what is on his lip? That looks like cum. Must click it immediately. Genius. Maybe AI knows better than I do. I got to quit questioning uh, uh, our overlords. And then another day, uh, another huge drop for Trump Media Technology Group. Another 18% decline. That makes a uh, 28% drop in the last five days, folks. Crazy how people are losing money off this. People lose their entire life savings. And they're just desperate to give money away to Trump. And uh, reminds me of the after party tonight. Tune in after party. Have a great after party coming up. I'm going to read this article to you guys about uh, true social investing. It's about faith in Trump. A really interesting article where they interview people who have actually invested in this company and how they don't give a fuck if they lose money. Them losing money is just more uh, a show of proof of the faith they have in their Lord and Savior, Donald Trump. It's the craziest quote I've ever seen, folks. It's very fascinating. I can't recall, like, very many times we've ever, like, watched cults form in real time right before our eyes. And it's one of the biggest ones the nation has ever seen. So, interesting as fuck. Meanwhile, remember I told you on the last show about how RFK Jr.'s campaign had the staffer who went out there and publicly said, yeah, our whole number one priority is making sure Biden does get elected. We just want to get Trump elected. We don't really care that much if RFK Jr. gets elected, as long as Biden does get elected. Well, apparently, they fired her because she said the quiet part out loud. Oopsies. Might not want to do that next time. Meanwhile, in Florida, Ron DeSantis wants to make it as much hell on earth as he possibly can. Ron DeSantis has now signed a bill into law that gets rid of local living wage laws in Florida cities. The law also stops local governments from passing heat protection for workers, like water breaks and mandatory shade. It also gets rid of predictable scheduling laws. Yeah, fuck those workers. Let them die in the heat. Your job is to work your life away, to suffer. And then die of a heat stroke for minimum wage, $7.25 an hour, motherfuckers. Learn to love it. Your oligarchs have spoken. That's where my brother lives, by the way. He lives in Florida, exactly where the fuck he should live. And, and folks, shamelessness is their superpower. Congressman Kevin Hearn's all mad because Joe Biden doing some uh, debt relief for, for students with loans. So he's like, Biden's debt transfer scheme puts the burden on taxpayers, forcing the 80% without loans to foot the bill for the 13% who do. Saddling the hardworking taxpayers of America with such a debt transfer will only make life more unaffordable. He's buying votes during the election year. This motherfucker took over a million dollars in PPP loans and had them forgiven, folks. Totally okay if they do it. The largest transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich in the nation's history. They sacked us. They looted us. He was on the front fucking lines of it. But I dare you poor college students want a few fucking crumbs. No, then it's a burden on the taxpayers because they don't give a fucking shit and neither do any of their supporters. Meanwhile, one of the big woke panic stories of last week was the fact that uh, the kid from Spider-Man and this uh, black chick were doing a version of Romeo and Juliet as a play. So, you know, uh, nothing, nothing that nobody in the history of the world should give a fucking shit about. So, of course, panic, fear, racism. Case in point, Stewie Peters just being as racist and as awful as he can fucking be on his very popular right-wing podcast. They took this third-world black chick who would be considered hideously ugly by the standards of any race, who makes Michelle Obama look like the prom queen, oh, shit. and then they cast her in the role of someone so beautiful that she's worth actually dying for. It's a play, dude. I mean, Literally, in the original play, it was two fucking dudes. It's ridiculous on its face. It is ridiculous on its no face. No pun intended. You are ridiculous, and your face but is also ridiculous. But it's not like they're the first ones to do this. 
Right. The original. The original did it. You're right. Thank you. I'm sure you're going to mention that immediately. This has been a fad now for years. Like turning Julius Caesar into a black guy oh, or no. Alexander the Great into a butt pirate. Oh, a butt pirate? No. Anything to diminish the creations and the accomplishments and the mere existence of white people. How does that in any way diminish the creations of white people? It literally doesn't. See, okay, in fiction, you can have like multiple universes. You don't always do things the exact same way you've always done it. Sometimes it's okay to shake it up, to... Try to target different demographics. That's how capitalism works. Uh, nobody should care about any of this, period. But I know uh, you're fucking pathetic and you have nothing better to whine about. Remember Hamilton? Uh-huh. It was terrible. When the founders were cast as a bunch of minorities and people actually thought that it was because Hamilton in real life was black? No, I don't remember that part at all. But uh, if that's true, that is a very sad commentary on education system. There are actually people who think that. Okay, well, that's Because terrible. of that play. Well, if that's true, that's really fucking stupid. And though Hamilton may be the one that the white race could agree to give up, considering he's the guy who surrendered America to the international banking cartel right from the very start. But what all this comes down to is this obsessive Marxist anti-white desire to redistribute the accomplishments <laughs> and the ideas oh my God. and the culture of white people. They're the just success switching shit up so it's not boring. It's not the same old goddamn thing every fucking time, okay? Newness. People sometimes want to see something that's new and different of white people to groups who have never accomplished on their own. Oh, that's very racist. Who, when Shakespeare was writing Romeo and Juliet, they'd yet to master the concept of the wheel, let alone a written language. And the entertainment industry is the perfect place to roll this agenda out because right along with the academia, it has the attention of the people. It's the perfect field to run a psyop through, to demoralize. Like, literally, I would have never fucking heard of this as if it wasn't for you right-wing dickheads. Just like the Bud Light thing with the trans influencer would have even, I'm on the left, okay? All I do is hear left-wing shit. I would have never fucking heard about it. If it's a psyop, you guys are behind it. ...is the population. Hollywood Jews have been doing it on screen for decades. Oh, the Hollywood theater Jews. stage is no different. It's the Jews. The Jews making the blacks look like they're human. Oh, my God. The horror of it all. Fucking Jews. <laughs> Very popular. Dude, uh, way more popular than I am, folks. It's a trash planet. Uh, already read that one. And, uh, boom, this one. Hell, yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah, Lauren Boebert. You guys hear, like, Lauren Boebert's kid who is uh, going to court because he's a thief. He was car robbing people and still an old lady last $25 and shit. Well, apparently, he's come out to say he is so poor, he cannot afford a lawyer. He needs to have a lawyer given to him by the court. And meanwhile, why her own kid can't afford a lawyer going to fucking prison, she's out there spending her time tweeting shit like uh, there's two things i'm into right now uh, apparently not motherhood springtime yard work and not having the government piss on our rights you know like the right to remain silent if you cannot afford an attorney one would be presented to you by the court hey yeah, you're not shit on that right yeah pay for your kids lawyer dipshit and then one more on chud watch Oh, yeah, folks, this is pretty funny. I should have put this in Beyond Parody. I should have covered this one uh, when I was covering um, these two before. But uh, whoever put this show together, they're to blame. Psh, slacker. Anyway, did you guys see this one where Mike Johnson is talking about hardened criminals and then uh, as a Freudian slip points to Donald Trump? Everybody from around the world to come here, including hardened criminals, including hardened criminals, I'm in the hardened way. criminals, Let's that again. hardened criminals, hardened criminals, including hardened criminals, hardened criminals. including hardened criminals, hardened criminals. Right, Donald Trump, hardened criminals. Donald Trump, scattered like a motherfucker. Hey, uh, good on you for being honest for once. Most alpha thing you've ever done, and that is my chud watch. Yes, sir. And what you guys got to think about that? Mike and his wink reporter partner. Johnson looks like he's a Trump sub. They all look like that. Every single one of them. 
Uh, the most beta humans on the goddamn planet. The type of people that need to pay $15,000 for alpha male boot camps to feel like men. And we have one of those coming up, folks. Don't tune out. It's uh, hilarious. Straight up Russian propaganda. Yep. I heard that. Damn, that guy's racist. You think? What did he say that was racist? Name a million things. Says a guy named Stu. I know, right? Super tough. Another micro penis. Overcompensating. Trying to be too badass. And uh, Romeo Juliet was about that. What a fuck. Please pray for my uterus. Pray for your uterus, Gloria. And all right, folks, moving right along. Hell yeah. Get your super chats in. Uh, we're going to do a trash world, and then we're going to read them. So don't miss it. But now we're going to do a what the fuck before we're going to read them. Hell yeah. Got two more sections. So uh, anyway, prepare your anus, folks. It's time for some trash world. The trash world. The trash world. It's a dumpster fire, and it's hitting the It's a trash world. A trash world. Everything sucks all the goddamn time. And the trash world. <laughs> Boom. And uh, this incel terror campaign is sweeping across the world. This is not the first time this has happened in recent times. It's happening over and over and over again where these guys that can't get women are going out attacking and murdering women. Sometimes they murder everybody because they're so out of their brain. With the fact that they're uh, so socially awkward, they can't get women. But um, the press is not really talking about it enough. They're just chalking this shit up to just uh, run-of-the-mill mental illness. When these 4chan incels are behind so much of the modern terrorism we see. Case in point, in Sydney, at the mall, a knife attacker killed six people. He attacked five women. He attacked only women. Uh, one hero tried to stop him and ended up getting killed. But it was all women. Uh, they interviewed his father, the attacker's father, told reporters on Monday he was devastated by the news and said his son had a long history of mental illness and frustrations with women. He wanted a girlfriend, and he has no social skills, and he was frustrated out of his brain, he said in comments reported by the Australian newspaper. Just, man, it's so scary being a woman. Like, literally, you don't even have to do anything. Just being a woman is enough for a guy to come up and knife you to death. He was attacking little girls, any female, this giant fucking piece of shit. Meanwhile, some heroes stepped up to try to stop him. Of course, uh, any man, he tried to avoid this cowardly sack of shit. Look at this guy standing in his way. Ye shall not pass. And like, he's scared as fuck. Pussy. Fucking cowardly sack of shit. Oh, my God. Crazy footage, though, folks. He hadn't seen this. This guy standing in his way, too. This fucking hero. Possibly shot dead. This gives you some idea. There's a mother with her children. People. And then he's running away from the guy, of course. He's aiming right at women. He's going only for women. This insatiable hatred for women. Because at some stage during the attack, the new 4chan toxic troll culture teaches men that they are do a girlfriend that they're owned owed a girlfriend that they don't have to earn it that it's just should be their birthright and the fact that they can't get women's it's not their shortcoming it's not that they're weird it's not that they've not done enough to make themselves fuckable it's the women the women must be punished the women are to blame because they don't fucking like you but no it's not the women's fault that you're a horrible sack of shit. It's not the women's fault that you don't work on yourself, that you're awkward, that you have no social skills, that you didn't have what it took to work on who you are until you're comfortable enough in your own skin. It's not hard to get women at all. It's not. You just have to be comfortable in who you are and not a giant fucking weirdo who thinks you're old pussy. And yes, I know he was mentally ill, but a lot of this is because of the incel mentality. And of course, exactly what you expect to happen first of all. Um, the right towards went out there and started blaming Islamists for this attack. 
Julia Harley Brewer, another day, another terror attack by another Islamist terrorist. Six dead, others seriously injured, including a baby. No, he was a right-wing incel. Immediately, Johnny on the spot to blame uh, foreigners, to blame Muslims, to blame brown people. And then, uh, on the uh, same exact side, pieces of shit like, uh, oh yeah, well, one of the heroes that lost their lives, it turns out, was actually a Muslim. Refugee becomes a victim of horrific bondy junks and stabbing. So it's the exact opposite. Not only was it not Muslims that did it, a Muslim gave his life trying to save his fellow Australians. These right towards are not reporting that. But then, uh, on the same exact side, not only are they blaming Muslims, also Jews. Right-wing shithead Jake Shields. This terrorist attack was done by a Jewish man. Will the media stop covering this now? It's the Jews. Uh, but no, folks, uh, no. It was done by incel Joel Kalchi. Knife six to death. A 40-year-old Australian heli from the state of Queensland has been thrust, that's a, a bad wording, into the spotlight. Uh, not previously known in law enforcement, he had encountered them in the past due to his issue related to mental health. No shit. Uh, his exact motivations remain uh, unclear, but his father pretty much gave it away, in my opinion. He had problems with women. He thought he was due women and uh, angry that no one liked no one liked him. And yeah, police are investigating whether Kalchi targeted women. Yes, yes, he did target women. Investigation over. Meanwhile, folks, the broke brains out there. Holy shit somehow managed to blame this attack on trans people. I shit you not. Somehow they managed to twist it around and involve trans people in this. That's how broke their brains are. That's all they think about. Literally, their minds are so clouded by trans panic, by transphobia. Everything comes back to trans people. Angela Jones says the body attacker didn't ask his victims their pronouns before attacking them. He attacked him on the basis of their sex. Uh, he didn't. He attacked him on the basis of what they look like. All right. I guarantee you he would have attacked Blair White just like he attacked anybody else. Right. He wasn't doing genital inspections. You fucking moron. Not their gender identity. Wrong. Literally. Literally was attacking them on their gender identity. Women need sex-based protections to keep them safe from violent men. Legislation needs to reflect that obvious need. Just good God. Everything you're saying is wrong and stupid. And speaking of the broke brains who bring everything back to transism, imagine dying of cancer and making your cancer death somehow revolve around your hatred of trans people. Women are real, Post. My pronouns are sex-based. Just like the cancer that's killing me. What? I'm pretty sure your cancer is not sex-based. Anyway, my friend is dying of uterine cancer and has a mic drop response if anyone dares ask her pronouns. Oh, my God. You guys are so sad. Die quicker! Come on, cancer! You have one job! Take this bitch to the light! I said goodbye to her yesterday. Good. Finally. Fuck. She handed me a paper explaining her wishes. Donations shall not be typical LGBTQ plus charities. Turf charities only. And this suggested we donate to Icon's women in her memory. No one's going to remember her. Born in the 1960s, my friend grew up in a time and place not friendly to homosexuals. She still grows up that place. She made her own way in the world and still decided to become a bigot for some reason. Using her wits... Psh, her many talents, eh, and her grit to become successful in a male-dominated career. She told me stories of lesbian potlucks and huge women's music festivals in the 80s and 90s. She played a mean game of softball and looked damn sexy on her bike, and now she's a corpse. Deleted, belly up, get fucked. Good goddamn, man. None. Yeah, go toward the light, love you guys. And all oh, terrible fucking news, you guys hear about this one? Apparently, O.J. Simpson died. Not O.J. What the? Oh, my God. I don't know if you guys remember O.J., but he was the star of the Naked Gun series. Remember this? Yeah. 
OJ. Now, look, I'll be honest. I, I never watched football, but I heard he was a good football player. And uh, I loved him in the Naked Gun movies. All right. He was like, the juice is loose. The juice is loose. I mean, I never really saw him, but I liked him anyway. Uh, to be honest with you, I hadn't really kept up with his career since the Naked Gun series. Uh, I guess he decided to stay out of the spotlight, which I respect. Some people just want to get their money, and then they just don't want the limelight anymore. They just want to stick to themselves and not have a lot of press. And uh, I guess that's the route he took. So good on you, OJ. Rest in peace, King. I think we can all, all of us, uh, agree on that. And uh, I haven't seen the rest of these yet. Apparently, uh, this went viral of this friend of OJ's who was having dinner with him. I haven't seen this. Let's watch it together. And you overheard a white woman at the next table saying, look, there's OJ sitting with all those niggers. And I remember in my naive day, saying to OJ, gee, I must be terrible for you. He said, no, it was great. Don't you understand? She knew that I wasn't black. She saw me as OJ. And, and really, at that moment, um, I thought he was fucked. Oh, man, that sounds bad, folks. I admit, I hadn't heard that before. That sounds bad. But, you know, if that's the worst thing OJ ever did, I think we can forgive him for that, okay? Not the best, not the best look, OJ, but everybody gets one. That's your one, OJ. And uh, uh, apparently this story was going around. I hadn't read this yet. Let me read it. It says, Nicole Manning, I've been waiting 29 years to tell this story about OJ and his days at USC. Now that he's dead, may he burn in hell, I have a story that I signed an NDA for that is no longer valid. I was a junior at USC working in Topping Student Center on campus in 1995. I was an administrative assistant to the president of student affairs that semester in the work study. In early 1995, Robert Shapiro and Robert Kardashian walked up to my desk and said that they had an appointment with my boss. I was studying to be a criminal defense lawyer with the dual major in poli sci and international relations so I knew who they were. Uh, the meeting lasted about 30 minutes. After they left, I looked at my boss like, what the fuck was that? Um, I haven't read this, but long story short, um, they covered up some rapes, apparently. That's what it says. Uh, they covered up some OJ rapes. The Kardashians, I've heard of them before. They're they're famous for something. I don't know. But yeah, uh, apparently they covered up some rapes. So, oh, no, that's too OJ. That's not great. Not great, to be honest with you. And uh, fuck the Kardashians. And speaking of the Kardashians, apparently Caitlyn Jenner put out this. Uh, which I haven't seen yet, that says, Good riddance, O.J. Simpson! And then somebody responded, Didn't you kill someone, too? What do you mean, too? Who did O.J. kill? What? I, I'm starting to think I'm out of the loop on some shit. What? When did this happen? Are uh, you sure? O.J.? The, the Jew? Okay. I don't know about that one. And, uh, Next up, what is this one? It's, uh, oh, it's a uh, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh says, the media says the quiet part out loud. OJ was their hero because he killed white people. Oh, okay. no wonder I never heard about this. He killed white people. We all know that white people don't count. <laughs> you did a world favor, OJ. It's all good. Of course, Elon, uh, Johnny on the spot to signal boost this. Definitely, this is something people say all the time, all the time, about how OJ is a hero because he killed white people. I know. Just... Definitely, everybody, everybody always said this. So anyway, and then Joe Biden, badass motherfucker, says, I promise George Floyd's family, if a uh, uh, genocide, Joe Biden makes a promise, take it to the bank. I promised George Floyd's family that he wouldn't just become another hashtag. And I intend to keep that promise. We need justice and we need real police reform to ensure this never occurs again. Four years ago, Joe Biden, and you know, he did all, he didn't do any reform, no reform, none, none at all. What did that? Oh, Texas man yelled, I can't breathe before being killed in police custody. Body. Okay. Oh, okay. What? What do you expect Biden to do about it? Something? <laughs> and then, oh man, this is a terrible story to end the uh, trash world with. 
You guys hear about this one? So uh, somebody was trying to con this boomer out of money. So they called him up and they basically were like, hey, uh, you, you got to pay us money or we're going to fuck you up. We're going to send somebody to get it. So then he calls an Uber driver to go pick up a package. The Uber driver knows nothing about any of this. And the boomer ends up murdering the Uber driver, this poor, innocent woman who had no part in any of this. Warning, this shit's uh, tough to watch. As the video here behind says. me is where a scam call turned deadly and I'm going to step out of the way here so you can get a look here. The man who lives here is accused of shooting and killing an Uber driver. He now faces a murder charge and potential other charges. Oh. Hey. Oh, According to reports, authorities say William Brock had been receiving multiple threatening scam calls the morning of March 25th. The calls were concerning an incarcerated relative, and Brock was told to meet at the courthouse to pay a ransom of $12,000 in bail money, or they would kill him and his relative. Around the same time of the call, Lolita Hall received directions from the same person or an accomplice, instructing her to go to Brock's home to pick up a package for delivery. Dashcam video from Hall's car shows her arrive to Brock's home to pick up that package. According to reports from the Clark County Sheriff's Office, Brock allegedly had a gun. This video appears to confirm that. The incident report says Brock allegedly took Hall's phone and wouldn't let her leave. And when she tried to go, authorities say Brock then shot Hall. They started fighting and he shot her two more times. Authorities received a call from Brock saying he had shot someone on his property because they were trying to rob him. When units arrived, they found Hall with multiple gunshot wounds and Brock was bleeding from his head. Hall was flown to Kettering Hospital in Dayton where she died. Reports say while officials were on scene, Brock's landline phone kept ringing, and when one officer picked it up, the man on the other line said he was an officer. And the real officer explained what happened and asked the caller to meet. And he agreed, but never showed up. We reached out to Uber, and they responded with this statement saying, in part, quote, There was no other way to describe this incident than a horrific tragedy. Our hearts continue to be with Lolita's loved ones as they grieve her sudden loss. We have been in contact with law enforcement and remain committed to supporting their investigation." End quote. Uber also went on to say the account of the individual who ordered the Uber trip has been banned. Oh yeah. The sheriff's office Great. is also reminding residents to be extra cautious. Yeah, everybody be extra cautious. If you drive Uber, just be fucking careful. Just what a trash fucking country, God damn it! All these old boomers with guns, gun happy. Should have immediately recognized that woman wasn't there to fucking rob him, didn't have a gun, just there to pick up a package. Just so fucking depressing is what the fuck it is. And anyway, that is my trash world. And we got some what the fuck coming up if you needed more. That was enough what the fuck for you. So much, so much content. More content than I want, to be honest with you. Those darn innocent white people. Brock is known for drinking a fifth of whiskey every night since the age of four years old. I wouldn't be surprised. A guy named Brock, yep. It definitely has the right name. Use Lyft next time. Psh, that was your mistake. The mustaches. No one could take that seriously. Or is, uh, no, Lyft is the one with the mustaches. I remember that from my time in Denver. Uber Lyft can be dangerous, almost not worth the work. I know, right. Don't get paid that much, hard on your car. But I guess you get to work for yourself. That's the bonus of it. Can take their driver's license, but uh, can't take their guns. True story. It's America. We got a God given right to murder anybody we want to uh, at our whim. And all right, folks. Gonna read all the super chats at the end of this section, but for now, it's time for. What the fuck? Like we haven't already been doing what the fuck the whole goddamn show. And uh, let's just go ahead and kick it off, folks. I thought this wasn't real. And uh, spoiler alert, it is. Do you live in Vegas? Are you a cop? Are you looking for a new female victim to groom so you can continue living your best pedophile life? Well, look no further. I present to you Cops and Curls. 
an event to connect and channel positive relations between our youth and officers, as well as increasing self-esteem in young ladies of our community. Dress up in your finest attire and join officers for an afternoon of dancing and fun. And I know you're thinking, you're thinking, nope, nope, not real. It can't be real. It, it's real. I love this story. You have to see this cute video. Our own Metro officers dancing with young ladies. <sighs> oh my God, y'all. This is cops and curls. Uh -huh. It's like prom for them. Uh -huh. Police officers no, treat girls not. to a fun night oh God. of dancing. The no. women wore beautiful no. dresses and tiaras, as you can see there. They even got escorted into the dance hall on the arm of an officer on a red carpet. Just an opportunity for uh, the young ladies to be treated like uh, like young women that they are. Um, let the let them know their their value. They're important. This is the first year they've held the dance here in the valley. They hope to make it even bigger next year. Oh my God! Just take them to youth camp. Just take them to vacation Bible school. All right. At least the youth pastors are more gentle. I can imagine the fucking cops. Just good God, y'all. What? What? Man, this is so weird. What is wrong with this fucking country? And uh, did you guys see Tiger Woods knock somebody out with the golf ball? Yeah, at least that's not pedophilia. And then he's like, four! Oh, yeah! Yeah, you got whack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come in hot. You got whack. Yeah. Maybe don't don't go to golf tournaments. That's sort of what you deserve. And uh, did you guys hear about the guy that failed his trucker exam? So he plowed his truck into the trucker exam office and killed some people. Yeah, at least 60 people have been injured after a truck driver intentionally rammed into the Texas Department of Safety building the day after they denied his license application. This dude really wanted to be a trucker. Being a trucker's not that great. Literally not worth killing over, dude. I guess he was like, if I can't be a trucker, I'm just gonna go to jail. That'll be my new job. Yeah, whoopsies. And uh, um, I don't even know what's worse. I don't know what's worse. The headline of the post or the uh, user added context. All right, so let me just start out. Dudes in India are burning their underwear in protest of laws that have gone into effect, such as making marital rape illegal. And there they are, burning it stinky shit covered underwear. Yeah, yeah. That's not even the worst part of this. Let's read the reader's added context. Marital rape is not even illegal in India. While it was briefly criminalized in 2022, a 2023 Supreme Court decision changed this and affirmed that marital rape was legal unless the wife was under... 15 years of age. Oh, my God. So then, of course, the immediate question is, then why are they burning their underwear? They're not even burning their underwear because they passed laws making marital rape illegal. They're burning their underwear because they're mad that they might pass laws that make marital rape illegal. Just good God. Just when you think America couldn't be bested, along comes India. Wow. Wow. Thanks, India. Make me feel a little bit better about being American. Holy God. And uh, then, that's a crazy video. You guys see this one. So, uh, spoiler alert. So, not this blind girl. So, this blind girl is going to say something, and then this woman is going to come on and comment to what the blind girl says. Uh, before I show you this video, the girl you're about to see that comes on after the blind girl shot a 16-year-old who her husband impregnated, went and murdered the person her husband was having an affair with after making this video. Here's the video. So uh, if you didn't see that, she's dancing to a song says that says, I have a girlfriend. And she's like, so what? I don't care if you have a girlfriend. So what? So what? Okay. Yikes! Yeah! She was serious! She put out that video. Oh no! You fuck my man, I'll kill you. And then she did it! 
Pretty sure uh, that video is going to be played in her uh, court case. Bad life decisions. And uh, then, do you guys need this crazy bitch? So, uh, you guys know me. I'm pro-Palestinian as fuck. I'm an activist, y'all. But taking it too far, this woman decided to go to a town meeting and uh, threaten to murder everybody there. Let's see how that went for her. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you motherfuckers. You guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors? We'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. A deputy public defender entered not guilty pleas on Patel's behalf to eight counts of threatening a public official and 10 counts of making terroristic threats. Yeah, too don't do that. You're not helping your cause at all. You're not helping yourself. Maybe don't threaten people's lives like that. Seems bad, dummy. Go to a town meeting to threaten everybody. What do you think was going to happen? And then last uh, but not least on what the fuck. You guys see the new popcorn buckets they're putting out for the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie? God damn it, now I gotta go to the fucking movie so I can mouth fuck these popcorn boxes. Holy shit, god damn it. I ain't been to a movie in like 20 years. Now I gotta fucking go? I gotta spend, what, $2.50? How much is a movie? I don't know. But I ain't got no choice. I, I got to fuck these popcorn buckets, right? Now, hopefully, I just said, hopefully, I'll get the Wolverine bucket because I love me some fucking Hugh. I love, but if I get the other guy, you know, if I get him, it's fine. He's hot too. All right. I, I happily fuck either one of these guys, but you know, all right, you got my money. You got my money, Marvel. Uh, I'm going to go face fucking hooray. And that is my what the fuck. Hell yeah. And uh, folks, um, I have a patron site. Um, Boom! In the description of every video, right. shut up, Dusty! Don't talk about face fucking no more. Um, the first link is to my Patreon. Could you please consider becoming a patron? So, uh, you guys follow the show know that I don't allow ads to run on the show. I don't sell nothing. I don't con anybody out of money. I make content almost exclusively for, for free, and then I put it out there to you guys. And I'm just trying to make a living wage. Um, so, if you enjoy my content, can you please consider signing up for my patron, uh, chipping in a dollar or two to help out me and the cats and the dogs and stuff. I hate to ask you. I, I hate having to ask anybody for money, but this is my uh, business model. And if you like the way uh, I've set my business model, um, please reward me for it and chip in a dollar or two. I, I thank you in advance. I know it's a pain in the ass, but please help me if you can. Thanks. And all right, let's read. Uh, the Super Chat. Where are we the Super Chats? I got some uh, mail. Hell yeah. Let's switch over to here for the fan. Now, it's not cat treats, assholes. It's not cat treat. No, it's not time for that. No, don't put your ass. Don't. I don't want to. I don't want to smell your ass. Don't put your ass. It's not time for that. So I got a letter in the mail and somebody sent me some best of the best. Wax. Boom. Hell yeah. Love this shit. Canalicious. That's the word anal right in it. Analicious. I'm going to protect like the CA name there. Analicious shatter. Now, this is how you do it, folks. Want to send me something cool? Look at that. Woo! Going to enjoy the shit out of that. Send me some nitrous or some shatter. Hero time here. Now, let me read the letter. Let's see what the letter says. I have not read the letter yet. It's a, oh, it's a picture. Uh, good guy. All right. Killmonger was right. All right. Killmonger was right. Woo! All right. I don't know who sent this, but uh, James Finley. What up, James Finley? Killmonger was right. Agree with you there. Hero, thank you. I appreciate you. And then I got this one. Somebody sent me, uh, looks like a vegetarian magazine. Forks and Knives. Plant Space, the Healthy Whole Foods Lifestyle Magazine. And, uh, Sabrina, thank you for reaching out to us. It was so nice hearing from you. Here are some resources. I guess they sent me that so I can become a, a better a vegetarian. And it's got a card, too. Let's read the card. The card. Oh, I got $20. Woo! Money! Yeah! $20. Fuck yes. Thank you, whoever sent this. Let's read. Thank you for being 
a kind and compassionate man. I've enclosed twenty dollars and a forks and knives magazine, and I printed an email that has help for spay, neuter, and such. The magazine has yummy recipes. Thanks again for entertaining us and creating a space for your online family to gather. Do you want me to send you the new issues? Sure, of course. Whoever did this? I, I'm assuming it's Sabrina. No last name. I don't see a last name anywhere. I appreciate you, Sabrina. I got it. Very generous. Thank you for uh, kicking in. And thank you for the recipes. Going to make me some yummy food. Hell yeah. You guys quit moving my monitor, please. And thank you. Oh, don't, don't do that. There we go. Don't show everybody my nasty ass microwave back there. And all right, guys, it's not time for the kitty party yet. Okay, we're only halfway through the motherfucking show. Just chill. Just chill. Everybody chill. Chill, bitches. And all right, let's read the super chats. Starting us off tonight, Rebecca Poys, hero to the show. Rebecca Poys, always amazing to me. Rebecca says, just finishing watching last week, was unable to join and contribute due to illness. The downside of being, guys, you're not helping. A nurse, looking forward to catching up on Tuesday. Hey, hopefully you feel better, Rebecca. I very much appreciate you. Very generous, as always. And uh, everybody, big love to Rebecca. She's amazing. Helping me keep the show up and running. And five dusty memberships from Rebecca. Always, always awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. And 20, 20, got them 20 for Mr. Anderson. You better see all you guys who got the free Dusty memberships at tonight's after party. It's going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, so check the community section of YouTube for a link to that. You lucky son of bitches. And get Rebecca Poise and Mr. Anderson all your love. Uh, Jen L. Smith, kitty punches. Kitty punches and a dog or a kitty. I don't know. I'm bad at this, but... Love you back, Janelle. Grumpy queer, $2. Tell the cops someone may try to swat you. I'm not fucking calling the cops. Fuck that shit. I am not interacting with the cops uh, if I can help it. But, like, God help you. If anything like that happens, John Thompson, God fucking help you. Fuck around and find out, motherfucker. I know he ain't scared of me, but I know he's scared of his wife. I know who fucking wears the pants in that family. And uh, you want me to go scorched earth? I will go goddamn scorched earth. If I even think you're going to put me or anybody I love in danger, don't. And all right, thank you, Sherlock. Five dollars. Hey, Dusty, this is money from SSD. So I have some of your taxes back. Hey, I appreciate it. I need all the help I can get. I paid fifteen hundred on my taxes, and I owe twenty-one thousand federal taxes. So uh, not the best, but. What sucks is, like, uh, so I guess I shouldn't say this because then you guys won't want to donate as much. It, please continue donating and super chatting. But, like, YouTube takes 30%. And then since I'm uh, self-employed, the federal government takes 30%. So I get one out of every $3. Man, it's hard to get ahead when you're only making one out of every $3. But what you going to do? I'm doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Thank you guys for supporting the show. It really helps. Uh, Jano Smith, our non finally here live after watching for years. Hell yeah, this is the place to be, Jano. Janelle, however you pronounce it, you're awesome. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Satishi Homer, Dusty, gonna get a booty warrior as a cellmate. I know, right? Some bad man definitely gonna make me his woman. Uh, you know, so I do what I gotta do. Whatever has to happen, has to happen. Hey, everybody knows if it's in prison, <laughs> it ain't gay. BBC, BBC. Speaking of gay, not that you're gay, but I'm gay for you. Not that I'm gay for you. Go to the light boomers anyway. I love you all. Here's some cash for the kitties and puppies. I have a new batch of tea coming out. Hell yeah. Woo -woo. Can't wait to be done with all of the court stuff so I can share. Hell yeah. Uh, I hope it's going well for you. And looking forward to smoking your tea, BBC. And not just the tip. Jeremiah has to dollars. Thank you for keeping the show going. Don't become a Walmart great. Hey, as long as I can keep funding my lifestyle like i live so fucking cheap i decided i can't afford a car so the car is out of the question now was going to get me like a 10 or 15 year old used car but i'm going to keep you driving the 30 year old car i have i guess i'll drive it till it's 40 years fucking old whatever it's fine i don't go anywhere i'm a recluse it ain't that big of a deal thank you uh, uh jeremiah 20 hours coach Ed. love you dusty great show Woo -woo. 
don't love you, Cole James. Name my kid after you. Appreciate you here, bro. Rich Lada, what a rich $22. Maybe you should tell the cops you have a crazy brother. I ain't telling the cops shit. Fuck the pigs. And you're afraid he might try to swat you. Nope, let him do it. Uh, believe me, he'll be uh, much sadder about it in the long run than I will be. Just explain you are a pet sanctuary and there's no way anything SWAT worthy would happen there. Just a thought. Eh, I don't want to talk to the cops. When you bring the cops into your life, it just makes everything more complicated. It's best to wait for shit to happen, in my opinion. Cops are like the last resort every goddamn time. Justin Joseph, $5. Do men like Stu Peters forget the faces they have when they talk out of them? I mean, he making so much money doing that, he don't give a fuck. That's the kind of thing that gets rewarded in this trash world, unfortunately. Satishi Homer, racist, like the guy make interracial love equals star cross love story. Makes sense the year of our Lord 2024. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no. Infinite universes. You could have different stories that happen in any universe, period. Not everything has to happen in the particular universe we live in. In, case, in fact, it's boring to keep the same shit the same way it's always been. Mix it up. That's what makes life fun. Tax day, here's your cut. I thank you, Kip. I need all the help I can get, believe me. Fucking Uncle Sam. Sherlock, my bad. I try to use my trans power for world peace and ended up causing all sorts of crap. You guys have too much power. Somebody need to take some of that power from trans people. Too strong. That is the last time I try that. Dial it back, Sherlock. Save some badasses for the rest of us. And Juke, what up, Juke? Tonight's the perfect night to debut cakes. Oh, okay. Um. So, uh, let's see if I can find it. Jupe asked me to make this song for them. They paid me to make this song for them. And I need to, this is just the very beginning of it. I need to make it better. This is the first draft. Jupe wrote all these lyrics. And here is the world debut of Jupe's song, Cakes. No. Uh, cakes an original song i created for jupe and if you guys want me to create you an original song pay me and send me the lyrics and i will click a button and ai will do it all for you <laughs> thank you jupe and uh, mitchell Rivera, thank you for doing the show and thanks for rescuing caring for animals homie majestic southern misfits hell yeah thank you uh mishka Rivera. appreciate you the MFB $2, ah, I'm still dirty, sexy, poor, but here you go. Nope, you gave me money. You're no longer dirty, sexy, or poor. You're ugly and rich. I'm sorry. Socialist, get to five, count of five. Hell yeah. Thank you for your socialism, socialist. Everybody show up tonight. And uh, that's it. Appreciate you guys for supporting the show. Still plenty of time to get the Super Chats in. going to read all the rest of them at the end of the show. So get them in early, get them in often, and support the world's greatest show. But for now, it's time to get even more depressed than we already are. But get your power fist ready. It's time to free Palestine. And uh, so you guys might have heard a little bit of hubbub going on the last couple of days. People are like, oh, World War Three." They say that every week now. It's always World War Three. Hurry up and get here already, World War Three. Sorry, Dusty, but I hated it. Hey, different strokes for different folks. You should pay me to make you one that you'll hate. Um, anyway, so uh, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus, which is bad, in broad daylight. This is a severe breach of the Vienna Convention and a violation of Syria and Iran's sovereignty. You would think Iran has the right to defend itself, but no, only Israel has the right to defend itself. Nobody else in the world. Not you, not me. Only Israel has the right to defend itself. And uh, 
In case you might be thinking, Israel didn't do that. So here's a, one of the Israeli spokespeople trying to deny it. Let's see if we believe her. Why did you feel it necessary to flatten the embassy in Damascus? So we didn't flatten anything. The Iranians are saying that Israel has uh, bombed um, a, a building, an official building, but that, that's not true. And by the way, that building was not a consulate or anything like that. It was a building near a consulate. And I can assure you that the people within that building at the moment were not dealing with visa applications or passports. You know? They were IRGC high members whose only goal was to uh, murder Jews mm. and Israelis. So you Proof? did do it? I'm not saying we, do it. we did it. I'm saying that... You are saying you did it. No, I haven't said that. And I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> Whoever said did that did that in order to uh, uh, defend uh, innocent people around the world because... What? Yeah, we're not saying we did it, but whoever did it is a hero. We know exactly why they did it and who they killed, but we're not saying they did it. Yeah, we're all trying to figure out who did this. Who could possibly be responsible for this? Yeah, it's you, bitch. The fuck? God damn it, all these dudes lie. And uh, yeah, kids are all right. A lot of kids speaking out against this bullshit. Here's a good explanation of what's been going on. Attacking another country's embassy is grounds for war, bar none, doesn't matter who you are. If you didn't know better and you opened up the news app, you would think that Israel was bracing for an unprovoked attack from Iran. NPR's classic both sides what about-ism, to Fox's full-blown xenophobia, hide in your bunker, the evil terrorists are coming. And what they're leaving out is that on April 1st, an Israeli airstrike destroyed the Iranian consulate annex building adjacent to their embassy in Syria. And that was Israel's whole point. If they can force Iran to retaliate, then that forces the U.S. to get involved in the war, more so than just funding it. White House sources say Biden is frustrated that he wasn't consulted on X, Y, and Z attack. I'm sorry. Crimea fucking river. They are emboldened in these actions, bombing Lebanon, bombing Syria, because you haven't put in any motion for accountability since the start of this. Iran is backed into a corner. If they get involved, then suddenly it's a war with America as well. If they don't, they're saying to the world, you can bomb our embassies, you can take out our top commanders in a foreign country with no repercussion. What would you do if you were Iran? Yeah, they have to, folks. They have to let me know they're not the world's bitches. They're going to lay down for Israel and let them bomb their sovereign territory, kill their people. And so we're all waiting for the retaliation from Iran. Sleepy ass zombie Joe Biden. It's so weird, folks. It's like some kind of zombie parasite has infected our politicians. And all they can do is like shuffle out there and say, Israel has a right to defend itself. It's so creepy. It's so weird. This is Joe Biden's response when he's asked uh, what he thinks about the possibility that Iran retaliates. Yeah. Mr. President, what is Mr. your President. message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Our American don't. personnel will laugh at that risk, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Will President, are our, our American President. troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. What would your address Zombie shit. Start, sir? Just this dawdling old fucking fool who doesn't care about our country, who has sold us out, whose loyalty belongs to another fucking country. Just so weird. Another example of it. Here's the uh, Joint Chiefs talking about this exact situation. When it comes to the U.S. response to poss possible Iranian attacks inside Israel, uh, one U.S. senator suggested today that there be a uh, joint U.S.-Israeli strikes against Iran if there were such uh, attacks against Israel. Are you ruling out anything at this point? I know you're not speculating, but is, is, is a joint U.S.-Israeli strike ruled out in this department? Um, you know, look, the, from the very beginning of this conflict, uh, the Department of Defense established two key objectives, you know, among the among four, which which I've discussed before, but two of those objectives have been to protect our forces and our citizens in the region, 
as well as support Israel's inherent right to self-defense. And so that hasn't changed. Uh, and so as we monitor potential threats and as we you know, do, we'll continue to take appropriate steps uh, to include any necessary force protection measures if our forces are threatened. Um, but when it comes to you know, speculating on when and if uh, Iran may attack uh, Israel, uh, again, I'm just not going to get into speculating or, or discuss intelligence. Um, and, and again, I'll just underscore what I said, that our commitment to Israel's security is, is ironclad. That's right. Just got to say it over and over again. It's a mantra. Got to chant. Israel has a right to defend itself. It's ironclad. You guys can do anything. We'll give you all the bombs you want. We'll have your back every step of the way. Nobody else can defend themselves but you. We worship you. It's all the fuck they do these days. Worship Israel while they commit genocide. It's so wild to fucking watch. Meanwhile, this is what's happening, folks. Israel whacking the hornet's nest. When the hornets fly out and sting them. We're the victim. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe those hornets stung us. We didn't do nothing, y'all. So exactly what you expect to happen, happen. Iran can't sit idly by and let them uh, bomb their embassies and kill their people. They have to retaliate. Otherwise, first of all, sending a signal to Israel that you can literally just bomb our entire country without us doing shit about it. And also, it shows weakness to their own people that their leaders won't protect them or retaliate when they're attacked. So they did the largest drone attack in the history of the world. Iran sent in both drones and whoa, missiles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And of course, folks, it's still, even when we're talking about Iran, it's still like cavemen versus space aliens. Because Israel has the backing of the United States. We have the most cutting edge military that can ever be conceived of right and they have all our best weapons all our best shit nobody can do shit to them so all this was just a a show of force of a bluster a big nothing burger really because nobody died almost none of the bombs hit they were all blown out of the fucking sky by the alien technology we've given israel Here's the size of one of the Iranian missiles intercepted. Look how big these motherfuckers are. The United States are the ones intercepted most of the mis- missiles, helped by uh, Jordan. And yeah, here's uh, the moment. It says the rockets hit Ben Gurion Airport. I guess a few of them got through. It seemed like at least, unlike Israel, Iran was attacking military targets. But Here's what happened, folks. America spent $1.1 billion in that one night. Over those few hours, $1.1 billion. We don't have any money for health care for us. We can't feed the starving. We can't house the homeless. But a billion dollars, just like that in the blink of an eye for Israel. Everything for Israel, nothing for us. For, for genocide Joe Biden. They don't care about us. Their loyalties are not with us. And yes... Hurry up, pay your taxes, slaves. You got student loans. Israel has free education. We have the most expensive health care in the world. Israel, free health care. We have 577,000 homeless. Israel, 2,000. Highest rates of depression in the world. Israel, sixth happiest nation. Endless money for Israel. Nothing for you. Work your ass to the bone. Get a heat stroke. Die at 40 in your goddamn cubicle. Everything for Israel. They are our bosses. They own us. And yeah, I don't even know what the fuck's wrong with these people. Lying is all they goddamn do. They didn't have to lie about any of this, folks. They literally were bombed, missiles, drone striked by Iran. There's plenty of fucking footage of it. These motherfuckers will literally lie when the truth would work better. The IDF has just posted this video compilation showing some clips of Iran's retaliatory drone and missile attack against it. While most of the clips are indeed from tonight, this one at the end is an old clip of a Russian grad rocket launcher from nearly 10 years ago. Why? Why lie? 
It actually hurts you. You had plenty of footage. You don't have to lie. It's just they want to lie. That's so crazy. This country is so psychotic that they just want to do it. It's like when they lie, it's like they're getting away with something. Like they enjoy, like, it's just a little, uh, another slight way of putting their dicks in our faces. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to lie to you. We ain't got to, but we're going to do it anyway because they'll believe anything. They'll eat our shit and tell us how delicious it is. It's hilarious to them. Just crazy. Meanwhile, folks, tough ass Joe Biden. Immediately went public to let us know his loyalty still lies with Israel. Like, we didn't fucking know that. Joe Biden, I just met with my national security team for an update on Iran's attack against Israel. Our commitment to Israeli security against threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Yes, we know there's nothing you, they can do. We know they can murder every single one of us and you'll still have their back, Joe Biden. We know that we'll starve in the fucking streets and you'll send them billions of dollars. We already know your loyalty does not belong to us. Thank you, though, for saying it over and over and goddamn over again. But don't worry, folks. The LAPD is closely monitoring the developments between Iran and Israel. We were all worried about that. While there are no credible threats to Los Angeles at this time, we are committed to ensuring safeguards to houses of worship and sensitive areas, blah, blah, blah. Just fucking die. God damn it. Ooh, Iran's so scared of you fat fucking pigs. You professional Candy Crush players. Eat a donut and shut the fuck up. Meanwhile, uh, British politician David Cameron getting owned live on television, just showing his fucking hypocrisy. A reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, uh, uh, we, you know, we would take the very strong action. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay if we do it. Not Iran, though. Iran is not allowed to defend themselves. We, we would nuke the shit out of everybody, but anybody else who retaliates, you're bad, you're evil, and you're wrong. Just good God. Just no moral grounding whatsoever. No moral authority for anybody in the West at this fucking point. Meanwhile, our politicians, of course, falling all over themselves to suck Israeli dick. Here's a representative of Maria Elvira Salazar. This Congress and this great nation has a long tradition of defending their righteous might. And we will continue our tradition of standing for the freedom of our allies and against terror abroad. We will not stand for one-sided calls for Israel to stand down. And we stand firmly with Israel and its right. Well, they go over there, bitch. Bye-bye. Go sign up. You're so fucking worried about it. Meanwhile, this is how fucked this guy. Even Glenn Greenwald telling a little bit of truth. Joe Walsh, billionaire Joe Walsh. An attack on Israel is an attack on America. No, it's fucking not. Israel is not goddamn America, no matter how much you guys want to pretend it is. And yeah, Glenn Greenwald, no, it is not. Israel it is a foreign country. But here's how fucked our society is. And I was raised in these beliefs. I was brainwashed to believe this, folks. This is how 1984-esque our society is. They'll actually teach us that being Israel first is actually America first. In fact, you can never be more America first than when you're actually Israel first. Then when you put Israel over America, that's how you become more America first. David Brody says, Israel is not Ukraine. It's much different. Just read the book of Genesis. If we don't stand with Israel and help them financially, I truly believe we will lose God's hand of protection for America. You think it's bad now? Just wait. For that reason alone, it's the America first position to stand with Israel. It's also biblical. Fuck everything about this, folks. Literally none of these people's loyalties lie with America. They worship Israel. And fucking cut. I don't care who makes upset. Cut Elizabeth fucking Warren, who last week said that she thinks Israel is going to go down as a, a war criminal country while she herself voted to fund them. 
Johnny on the spot to say, I strongly condemn Iran's attacks. The U.S. supports the Israeli people during this difficult moment and Israelis' right to defend itself against the dangerous aggressions. It's literally Iran trying to defend itself. Just even Democrats, as worthless as they fucking get. And yes, she got $300,000 from a pro-Israeli lobby, folks, because they don't work for us. In Israel, we trust their loyalty 100% with a foreign country. Right in our face. Meanwhile, the superintendent, Ryan Walters, He's the guy that runs all the schools in Oklahoma, wants all of us to know. Over the next several days, we will see unprecedented commentary from leftist educators denouncing Israel. We will not stand for this in Oklahoma. What the fuck are you going to do about it? I guess so much for free speech. You will say what we tell you you can say. America. They're literally going to make it illegal to speak out against Israel in this country. They, they're already doing it in Germany, which I'm about to fucking show you. It's getting real fucking dystopian, folks. Good news is, Iran seems like they're done. They just wanted to do like a a show of force to prove that they wouldn't just lay down like a bitch, that they would actually fire back, even though they knew their missiles weren't going to get through because, like I said, they're cavemen versus aliens. And it looks like as far as what the Biden administration is inferring, that they are not going to do anything. They're not going to retaliate. So they're going to let it all fucking go. Iran beat their chest. They threw a few punches. Nothing landed. It's over. Everybody's going home. So hopefully World War III will not be started by this. But that's what the Biden administration is saying now, that it's all over and done with, and they're going to uh, let it go. Hopefully that's fucking true. But meanwhile, folks, remember... When he leaked how mad he was about all the aid workers that got killed. So angry at Netanyahu, the exact day he was putting out that fake bullshit, U.S. approved more bombs to Israel on the day of World Central Kitchen strikes. It's all fucking bullshit. Leaking this propaganda, these lies to make us think he gives a shit. Meanwhile, publicly sucking his dick and sending more bombs to kill more children. This fucking child murderer who is somehow our best choice in the next election. This fucking mass goddamn murderer. This war criminal. And yes, everybody wants to say this is not Biden's fault. Look at this. Made in USA. Israel is killing us with American bombs funded by my tax dollars. Your tax dollars. America is directly participating in the genocide. Yes, we are war criminals. I'm evil. I, Dusty Smith, now consider myself evil because I have decided to pay my taxes. Instead of doing the moral thing, going to prison, standing up and pushing back and fighting against the system as hard as I can, I've decided that I'm not brave enough to fucking do it. And I am ashamed of myself. I wish it wasn't fucking like this. I I, I don't even know what to fucking say. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I'm paying my fucking taxes, y'all. What even fucking are we? Meanwhile, somehow now Donald Trump has a little bit of moral authority. On account of genocide, Joe Biden murdering all the children. Not that Donald Trump would do anything differently, but he didn't yet. So now he has uh, the chance to go in public and say shit like this. She is a big problem. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. He's done everything wrong. Think she is. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. I'm glad it's him instead of me this time. But as soon as I get there, I'm going to do exactly the same fucking thing. Meanwhile, folks, uh, another week, another week of Israel filming themselves committing war crimes. Here's them looting. 
Gaza and homes. What did you bring us from Gaza? What is it? A luxurious carpet. <laughs> Pillaging during wars a violation of international humanitarian law, by the way. Israel soldiers keep posting footage of themselves looting Palestinian things in Gaza. From simple items like clothes to expensive goods like watches and jewelry. There's so much of this, man. There's so much of it. So much that I've edited out that I've decided not to show you because the show would be 10 hours long. Like, this is a three minute video alone right here. Showing them film themselves being the worst people on earth. Army in the world that acts in a more moral fashion than the army of Israel. <laughs> wow! How many Palestinians have you killed? I don't know, 20, 15. I don't count. <laughs> Guys, we're booking Gaza right now. I'm trying to get my bombs to go. <laughs> we f your babies, yeah. You think it's funny? Yeah, it's very funny. Would you say that Israel is on track for a strategic victory in Gaza? Uh, you want me to go first? <laughs> Most of the people here are racist because we were taught to be. Only American can hit Man, it makes me want to cry, man. You guys know I don't, I don't have health insurance. I can't afford to have health insurance. I can't afford it. Because two out of three of my and dollars, one really goes to you two, one goes to the government. I can't fucking afford it. Because I'm paying for this. Because they're taking my money and they're paying to murder children. I can't even go get my fucking kidney stones checked out. I fucking suffer. And I have to watch these butchers, these child murderers, laugh and put it in my fucking face. Man, it's hard to do this fucking show sometimes. God, it's so angering. What the fuck? Meanwhile, they, they, they like I said, they love lying. They love shitting on us. They get off on it. Here's Israeli foreign minister. Israeli protects freedom of worship. The Iranian regime intentionally harms places of worship. Israel has destroyed 1,000 of the 1,200 mosques in Gaza. They know that nobody believes this. They don't care. They're like sexual deviants that get off on it. Like this guy, breaking. Israel just eliminated three terrorists in Gaza, who also happen to be Ishmael Hania's three kids. These kids are aged 4, 8, and 10. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Goodbye. And his grandkids, too, all terrorists. They're children. They're children. They get off on it. Two million views. Two fucking million views. 2,000 likes. Calling a four-year-old a terrorist and bragging about murdering him, folks. Meanwhile, they're literally writing books teaching their children why it's okay to kill Palestinian children. I shit you not, look at this. Under the Rocket's Glow, Shira's Journey to Courage by Roman Sandler. Making money, teaching their kids why it's okay to murder Palestinian children. And yeah, here's the second edition. Where are the Nazis now? This is what you should really be teaching your children. Zionism is an anti-Semitic death cult. I guess that wouldn't wouldn't sell quite as well. Meanwhile, folks, it doesn't matter what your DNA is. 
If you're willing to move from anywhere in the West over to Israel and champion the murder of children, you're in. You're indigenous of Israel. You are due that land because of the Bible. Elon Levy moved to Israel 10 years ago and became an instant citizen from Britain. Emily Schrader moved to Israel five years ago and became an instant citizen from California. Michael Rappaport moved to Israel five minutes ago and became an instant Israel citizen. These are the native indigenous people of the Levant and chosen by God. These motherfuckers now, they're chosen by God to own that land. They have more rights to that land than Palestinian people who've lived there their whole lives and their entire lineages have been there their entire lives since the beginning. Meanwhile, did you guys know that uh, many of the military bases in Israel are right in residential areas? Yeah, it's almost like they're using human shields. The exact same thing they accuse Hamas of. They're doing the exact fucking same thing. They have tunnels all over the cities, all amongst the civilian population. 100% every accusation is a confession. Meanwhile, Israel continues dropping bombs to civilian homes in southern Lebanon in the middle of the night. I guess I need to go ahead and skip past some of this. There's just too much of it. Israel cop kills an American citizen. The U.S. government uh, covers it up. Won't even say who killed the guy. Germany is disinviting pro-Palestinians to the country. They're banning them from the country. They're arresting Jews who are protesting the genocide. Germany arresting Jews for protesting genocide. Germany giving Holocaust survivors $236 payouts to help them cope with October 7th attacks. It's a total fucking joke. Meanwhile, it was just reported that the New York Times put out a memo instructing their reporters not to use the word Palestine except in very rare cases and to steer clear of the term refugee camps to describe areas of Gaza historically settled by internally displaced Palestinians who fled from other parts of the Palestine during previous Israeli Arab wars. Not the only thing the memo said. Don't use, do not use in datelines the word Palestine. Don't use refugee camps. Don't use words like slaughter, massacre, or carnage. Terrorist. It is accurate to use terrorism and terrorists in describing the attack on October 7th, but otherwise, no. Avoid fighters. Avoid occupied territories. Manufacturing consent, folks. The New York Times completely sold out any journalistic integrity they might have had for Israel. Of course they did. This is why print media is going extinct. Nobody trusts you anymore, and they shouldn't. Meanwhile, Mehdi Hassan has just started his own uh, journalistic media group and put out an excellent video highlighting what I just talked about. Horrific. A slaughter. A massacre. These are the kind of words that millions, if not billions, of ordinary people around the world are perfectly comfortable using to describe Israel's relentless killing of over 30,000 Palestinians in Gaza including over 13,000 children, whether they were sheltering in hospitals or schools or in mosques or churches. And yet these are not words that tend to be used by Western media outlets, in particular by American mainstream media, to describe what is happening in Gaza to the Palestinians as they are killed in record numbers and in some of the most brutal ways imaginable. They're rightly used for Israeli victims, yes, but not for Palestinians, oh no. And you don't have to take my word for it. The numbers don't lie. A survey of articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post and the LA Times reported on by The Intercept back in January found that the term slaughter was used by editors and reporters to describe the killing of Israelis versus Palestinians 60 to 1. And massacre was used to describe the killing of Israelis versus Palestinians 125 to 2. Horrific was used to describe the killing of Israelis versus Palestinians 36 to 4. What else do we call that other than the deliberate dehumanization of the Palestinian people. Remember when the Associated Press referred to the 12,300 Palestinian minors killed by Israel? 
Can't say the word children, oh no. They're Palestinian, they're not innocent, they're not human. It's not just U.S. newspapers, but U.S. television, too. In a study of the guests who appeared on Sunday morning political shows in the first three months after October the 7th, Dr. William Humans found that not only were the American guests who appeared on air more than twice as likely to sympathize with Israel than with the Palestinians, but that overall there were ten times as many Israeli guests as Palestinians. Ten times. What else do we call that other than the deliberate dehumanization of the Palestinian people? And it's not just the U.S. media. The U.K.'s isn't much better. A study of the BBC's online coverage of this issue, published by a pair of data scientists in January, found a systematic disparity in how Palestinian and Israeli deaths are treated. See, Palestinians, per the BBC, tend to die or be killed, but very rarely are they murdered. No, that term is almost exclusively reserved for Israelis when it comes to this war, with a 101 to 1 Israeli to Palestinian ratio. In addition, words like mother, daughter, father, son were much more likely to be used for Israeli victims of Palestinian violence, but not so much for Palestinian victims of Israeli violence. They just tend to be nameless, faceless numbers, statistics. What else do we call that other than the deliberate dehumanization of the Palestinian people? Look, the Western media's coverage of what the International Court of Justice has called a plausible genocide unfolding in front of our eyes in my view, is perhaps the greatest, most consequential, most shameful media failure of our lifetimes. Only the media's coverage of Iraqi WMDs and the non-existent threat from Saddam Hussein back in 2003 comes even close to what we've all had to see, read and hear in recent months. So it's difficult to overstate just how dehumanized Palestinians are, not just in our media discourse, but in our political discourse too. Earlier this month, in an interview with The New Yorker, Aaron David Miller, a veteran U.S. State Department advisor who has worked on Middle East policy for multiple presidents, let the cat out of the bag. Do I think that Joe Biden has the same depth of feeling and empathy for the Palestinians of Gaza as he does for the Israelis? No, he doesn't, nor does he convey it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We have a word for this phenomenon of caring more about the suffering of one group of human beings over another, of prioritizing one group of people over another based on their nationality, their ethnicity. It's called racism. Now, one of the reasons I founded Zateo, which officially launches this week. So anyway, I know it gets said too much, the comparison to the book 1984, but that's exactly what we're living through. This manufactured consent, this wagging the dog. This fucking propaganda from our media who's supposed to be free, but is in no way fucking free. Meanwhile, our own Democratic politicians working against us. John Fetterman going on CNN to say that President Biden shouldn't capitulate to the fringe. We aren't the fucking fringe. You are the fringe. The majority does not want genocide. We do not want ethnic cleansing in our name. We do not want these children to be murdered by our tax dollars. You are the fucking fringe. This goddamn ghoul, impossible to overstate how disgusting, how evil this man is. Here he is confronted by his own constituents. Doesn't believe he owes anybody any explanation. Doesn't even have to talk to you looks down upon us like we're fucking worms. Senator, I always thought you were an anti-racist, but it seems like you value Israeli lives more than you value Palestinian lives. Is that true? Still, still with Israel. So you think an Israeli life is more valuable than a Palestinian life? Okay. Senator Just do. I dare you talk to Israel. Nothing you can say. No amount of child death, no amount of murder, no amount of ethnic cleansing to do with Israel. They're the one who pays my bills. Senator, you do agree that the that the vast <laughs> majority of hostages who have been released were released through ceasefire negotiations? True or false? I'm just, no, that's a question. He doesn't owe you any answers. He doesn't work for you. He works for Israel. His loyalties don't lie with you. You fucking peasants. Why are you even speaking to him?
And yes, then he put this out, folks. The New York Times, military aid to Israel cannot be unconditional. To which Senator John Fetterman, no conditions. Nothing Israel can do. Joe Fetterman doesn't care if Israel rapes his wife and murders his children in front of him. No conditions. They can eat human flesh. They can nuke America. No conditions. Nothing, nothing will shake his loyalty to a foreign government. And this is a goddamn Democrat. Fuck us, man. We are so boned. And hero protesters went out and gave uh, insider trading cunt Nancy Pelosi the business. Nancy Pelosi, you are complicit in genocide. The blood of over 15,000 Palestinian babies is like, on your boo, hands. I dare you try to save children's lives. Boo, just goddamn the worst humans on earth. I'm going to finish with this one, folks. A lot of good Jewish people out there who do not want their name used to commit atrocities. This is Jewish actress Miriam uh, Margolis. So ashamed of Israel as I am at this moment. To me, it seems as if Hitler has won. He's changed us, Jews, from being compassionate and caring and do unto others as you would have them do unto you into this vicious, genocidal, nationalist nation pursuing and killing women and children. What we are doing, Jewish people, over in Israel is shocking, embarrassing. Pelosi is against weapons to Israel. Then why does she vote for it repeatedly? What the fuck's wrong with you guys? I want to ban you when you say shit like that because it's so fucking stupid. You don't get to use my platform to spread bullshit. I don't care what she signs. I care what she votes for. I care what she says every goddamn time she has a chance to speak and it's always Israel has the right to defend themselves you guys don't believe fucking anything and that's why these pieces of shit rule us that's why they're allowed to murder kids with impunity because you guys will get my goddamn chat and defend them you fucking dickheads fuck off Sing and wicked and in the name of humanity I call upon all Jews shameless what is wrong with you it's worthless. Why do you want to be that way? Why do you want to defend people who are literally murdering children? These inside trading cunts. These traitors to fucking America who don't have any loyalty to us whatsoever. Still, you're going to fucking defend them because you're in some kind of democratic cult. Shame on you. I know that's not the person you want to be. Be better. Do better. That's my free Palestine section. And folks, it's going to get a little bit more interesting coming up. Not interesting, uh, I don't want to say happy, uh, less depressing. We're going to do a Beyond Parody coming up, uh, followed by religious bullshit. I got a couple palate cleansers uh, and some OK Boomers. So got still got plenty of show left, but not going to be quite as depressing, hopefully. So thank you for uh, bearing with me while I covered that. But so much this week on the brink of World War III. So uh, I had to do my due diligence to cover that the best I could. Who am I shouting out now? Anybody I fucking want to. That's the good thing about having the Dusty Show. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. And, uh, all right, folks, we're along. Let's go ahead and keep this show rolling with a little Beyond Parody. Beyond! It's a parody! And, yeah, and you know who's stupid as shit? Tim Pool. Apparently, Tim Pool uh, had some dealings with the lawyers this week. Guys, remember how Elon Musk got sued because uh, he went out and he lied about this uh, Muslim guy, uh, accused him of being an illegal immigrant who was a, a, a terrorist, basically. And uh, this bullshit was spread by lots of people in their mad dash to hang brown people off the dry, to spread uh, fear and panic towards immigrants. And Tim Pool was one of the main ones that did it. So he's also being sued. Well, everybody else lawyered up except for super genius, a multimillionaire, Tim Pool. And, and what was really strange is that most of these defendants were represented by counsel when we were talking to them. 
the only one that wasn't was Tim Poole, who thought that he could negotiate with me without an attorney. Oh and my gosh. And he didn't get traction either. What a moron! The guy's a multi-millionaire! You have so much money! What kind of fucking idiot doesn't hire a lawyer? And here's the most hilarious part. Uh, when he has to go to court, when he gets deposed, you can't wear hats! They're gonna de-beanie beanie baby! He gonna have to take it off. We gonna see that shoddy bald head, Tim. I can't fucking wait. I bet. I'm just gonna go on a limb. I bet he settles out of court for whatever the fuck he has to pay. Take millions, whatever, whatever, just to keep me out of courtroom. Don't show my bald head. Nobody has ever been this insecure about their baldness in the history of mankind than Tim Pool has. It's beautiful, folks. And uh, that... So you guys know who uh, Chaya Ratbitch is? She's the lib, the TikTok creator, works directly for Elon Musk and uh, has an account that doxes uh, trans people, gay people, basically anybody uh, on the left and uh, has an army of terrorists that follow her that send death threats, uh, bomb scares to anybody she makes a comment on uh, like this. Update, Libs of TikTok creator Chaya Rabich said on March 28th, it's about to get worse for Planet Fitness. And since then, at least 43 locations of the fitness chain have been reported bomb threats. 26 new public incidents since just last Friday. And here's the list of all the Planet Fitness that have gotten bomb threats. Well, here's why this is beyond parody, folks. Now she's trying to call the FBI to get people in trouble for doing the same exact thing that she does. This guy getting real tired of this lady. Someone should do something. That's hundred percent what she does. She posts like a, a trans teacher. Somebody should do something. Oh, this class, this library has a gay book. Somebody should do something. Bomb threats, bomb threats, bomb threats. Somebody says somebody should do something like banning her or something. And she's like, this ex user makes a threatening statement saying someone should do something about me. He's reportedly from Atlanta and can be seen wearing anti-fascist social club sweatshirt. FBI, FBI, please help me. This guy is doing what I'm doing. Just good God. They're so fucking pathetic. And then, uh, unsurprisingly to anybody, apparently she doesn't know what showers are? Yeah. Uh, Dan says, why haven't they made car washes but for humans? To which Chaya says, I literally think about this every single night. Take a shower, you smelly bitch. What the fuck? Literally. There's a word for that. It's called a shower. Good God, these people are so weird. And, uh, then... <laughs> I guess comedy is now illegal. I love it when right wingers, but like the left are, are, are so sensitive about comedy and they get so butthurt when anybody makes a joke about this. So the Babylon Bee, who is the right wing version of the onion has been making a few jokes lately about right wingers. taking a few pot shots and the right is flipping their lid about it. Babylon Bee says, Carrie Lake announces plan to lose another election, but this time while supporting baby murder. And then uh, Carrie Lake War Room, this is reprehensible, and it isn't even valid satire, disgusting, wah, wah. I dare you make a joke at my expense, so oh, learn to love it. Meanwhile, you know who else is dumb as dog fuck? Kevin Sorbo, Jerkules himself is like, if illegals aren't voting in our elections, why do you care if we make it illegal? It's already illegal. What the fuck are you talking about? Illegals can't legally vote in elections. It's always been fucking illegal. We don't care if you make it illegal. You know why? It's already illegal. You guys aren't making it more illegal. Just good God, they're so dumb. But their words don't mean anything. And, and uh, more bad news for Elon Musk and the cyber truck. This fucking death machine, holy God, why would anybody buy this? Um, so you guys might have seen the videos going around where people are leaving the dealerships and the Cybertruck will die one mile down the road. There has been case after case of this happening. Well, now, um, apparently, oh, let me show you the video. So apparently the Cybertruck has a stop zone, and I might know why. Uh, it's got something to do with the accelerator pedal. So let me show you something interesting about my Cybertruck is that pedal looks different, right? Because it's missing this. So a couple days ago, I'm driving and let me see if I can get a good view here. I'm driving and this goes here 
as I'm driving this slid up and wedged itself just like that. Oh, goody! What an amazing design! Don, so it's kind of hard to see, but <laughs> this wedged itself Who this? right there. Oh my God! And as you can see, based on the design of the floor, how is this legal? This up, how can these be on the road legally? The pedal. These are gonna get people um, killed. It held the accelerator down hundred percent, full throttle. Now, um, I was luckily. That's just crazy, crazy. y'all. Good God! Ooh. It's a death box. I wouldn't be anywhere near one of those things. If I saw one, I would turn around and drive the other fucking direction. And everybody's talking about shit going around their Cybertruck. This guy took delivery today. Made it one mile down the road, started getting steering error, flashing red screen, pulled off side of highway. Now the truck is dead, and I'm walking for a tow truck. They're paying like $100,000 for these trucks, y'all. These rust machines. Meanwhile, apparently, uh, Eli Musk is firing 10% of the Tesla staff. That was just released today. Not looking very good over there at Tesla. Super genius Elon Musk fucking everything up. Meanwhile, I just, I almost feel bad for him. I know he has autism, but no one has ever been this uncool in the history of mankind. No one has ever been this uncomfortable in their own skin. Here he is trying to look cool at some kind of a, I guess, a bre breakthrough prize, some kind of event where he's stopping for a photo op. Cringe alert. And dude, you need to quit surrounding yourself with a yes man. Okay, you need somebody to tell you you're way too fat for this suit, dude. You gain way too much weight. Buy a bigger suit. <laughs> oh my god i just feel bad for him i just want to give this guy a hug he's so sad he wants to be loved and cool so bad but the more you want to be loved and cool the more uncool you get just a horror show meanwhile did you guys see grimes headlining coachella uh, apparently it did not go well uh, which is good because i can't stand this fucking cunt another cunt i'm sorry i know that word trigger some people but good god the type of person that would marry and have kids with elon musk would marry the richest man of the world and call themselves a socialist just a ridiculous human being anyway first off making a cool entrance at least i'm sure her music will go well I don't know why they're cheering. This shit always fucking happens. So basically her entire set was fucked up because she doesn't know how to just play music. It was all a double tempo or some shit and she's making it worse. If she just played it, probably nobody would have noticed because everybody's on drug, but she keeps cutting the music off and apologizing for how shitty of a musician she is. All my tracks are twice as fast, so I'm not mixing very well, but I'm gonna keep trying and I appreciate you guys being here. <laughs> What a shit show. So it's literally five it's minutes of her mad, fucking up and apologizing. I'm going to go back to... Okay, the rest of the mixes are going to be a bit crazy. Get this, actually. Oh, yeah. I'll show you my rage right now. You got plenty of fucking money. You really can't do better than this. I mean, I have technical difficulties for this show a good bit, but even I can put on a better program than this by my goddamn self with a budget of zero. Hand of this. All right. <laughs> People Let's paid for this, y'all. Ain't no drugs good enough. Don't judge me for being bad oh, at I'm judging you. Things. You're literally a musician. This is your job complex technology but 
Just push play! Everything has been put to a double tempo, so I'm doing a lot of internal math in my mind to make... Oh, yeah, so much math. Got to carry the one, divide by zero, time. all uh, of it. The BPM of the song, and I'm going to... I'm going to use my ear and try to make it work. So... If... I will do that right for you. I will do this correctly for you. Um... It's currently reading 134, and I know it's 173, so this could be Cray, but let me... Let me... Just push oh, play! Fucking... <laughs> Just, oh right. my god. So anyway, six minutes of that, good lord. What a fucking amateur. Do better, uh, Coachella. And that, speaking of Beyond Parody, folks, I love this one. So this is a uh, convicted felon. Cash Patel, is he convicted felon? Cash Patel, Donald Trump, uh, nut writer. So first he's like, you were immune to propaganda. But are you immune to the shatters? What? No, no. You're immune to propaganda followed by a sentence that is pure propaganda. Mwah, mwah, mwah. So yeah, he's selling uh, anti-protein spike pills because that exists. ABG always be grifting. Gotta love it. And God love them. Meanwhile, you know who I love? The Good Liars. You already know this one. Uh, this week, they're out selling Trump Bibles to Trumpers at Trump rallies. Let's have a look. Get your Bibles. Get your Trump Bibles here. The good book is now a great book. It's like the Bible, but better. The Bible's out of date. Would you guys like to get grifted? I'm selling Bibles. They're cautionary parables. There's so much to be learned from Donald Trump's life. This is a passage from the Trump Bible. And Donald Trump said unto his servants, I shall change the path of the hurricane with thy sharpie. Among the listeners was a humble tradesman named Billy Bush. And Donald Trump said unto Billy Bush, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. Hoping to sow doubt and division among the people and seize power for himself. Trump said unto the people, check his birth certificate. Donald Trump saw an opportunity to profit from the faith of his loyal followers. <laughs> he commissioned the printing of countless Bibles. As the ballots were counted and as the results announced, it became clear that Donald Trump had not secured enough votes. That's not a Bible story. No, it's, it is a Bible story. It is, it's in the Trump Bible. See, Trump Bible, and it's a story in it, so it's a Bible story. It's a grift, right? <laughs> the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt commit adultery. Thou shalt put no other person above Trump. Thou shalt steal. Thou shalt commit false witness against thy neighbor. It means you can lie. Like a, would you like a Trump Bible? Oh, how much are they? Only $10. Oh, 10 bucks? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bargain. please take one. Here's yeah. another 10. Ooh. Oh. Just another 10. You sold uh, a Trump Bible here? There you go. So many things to learn in there. A lot of stuff is about what not to do. The good, the good book is now a great book. Love me some good liars. Go subscribe to them. Uh, doing the Lord's work. And uh, that. <laughs> I love this fucking country. As much as I cry about it, get upset. America, the greatest country on earth. I'm just surfing the most popular topics on Twitter slash X, World War Three, Israel, Iran, that field when you bust and she's still sucking, genocide, all of it. It's just beautiful, beautiful. No notes. Thank you, universe. Programmer God, spot on as always. And one more. As I mentioned earlier, folks, nothing makes you more of a man than paying somebody $15,000 to scream in your face. Case in point, another video from Alpha Male Boot Camp just dropped. Let's have a look. I'm strong. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. I'm a man. I'm a man. I am a man. I'm a man. I am a man. I am a man. I'm a man, y'all. You know it. I'm a man. You know how you know I'm a man? Because I'm telling you I'm a man. Just good God, no. No, this is the worst thing to do. Just be comfortable in your own skin. If you want to be like a manly, go protect somebody, right? Go uplift somebody who was bullied. Be a good example to a child. Do not pay a douchebag to scream in your face while you scream, I'm a man. I'm a man, y'all. I'm so manly. Good guy, look how manly I am, guys. I am a man.
God, men are doomed. What the fuck, man? I did not have any kind of father figure growing up. And I didn't have any trouble figuring out how to become a man. It's not difficult. Just this ain't it, bro. Good Lord. I just feel bad. It's like Elon. I feel bad for these guys. Like clueless. Yeah, that is my beyond parody. Holy Lord. Yeah, yeah the cuddle. Got a tip of mixture for that. Got to cup the ball sack. I say, you know you're a man. Dude, this is cuddling. I know, but it's manly cuddling. He's all overwhelmed with emotion because he asserted his dominance. Man shit. Just, he wouldn't understand. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. Man shit. And beta. My dad was a pushover. My dad was a nice dude, but he wasn't around much. I learned how to be a man from like TV and shit, movies, and taught me pretty good. Just like defend the weak. Put your shoulders back. Stand up fucking straight. Don't let people walk the fuck all over you. Respect yourself, but also be comfortable with who you are. It's not complicated at all. I am a woman. Wait, what? Pretty funny. All right, move right along, folks. We're already into overtime. Who loves overtime? Everybody. All oh, the ceiling. That fan over there. I do. So reward me for overtime. Get your super chats in. But for now, it's time for... And folks, we got a good one to start out with. Some new religious drama just dropped. Apparently, Pastor Mark Driscoll got kicked off the stage at a stronger men's conference in Springfield. I guess for some reason at church, they decided to have a male stripper. Okay, okay. And I'm only assuming Mark Driscoll felt his dick move a little bit. He was like, oh, hey. So he got up and he spoke out against it. And the other preacher who invited the stripper was like, oh, hell no, you don't speak out against my stripper. I wish I were making this up, folks, but I am not. Right, let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. Thinking about it. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. You've been taking the dick and the throat. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say. But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. Not the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a dick, a pole, a pole. an ashram. The same thing that's used in the strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. Jezebel. In front of that was a man, was a man. who ripped his shirt off. Sexy man. Like a, a muscular woman man. In front of a pole. At a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descended. Did Jesus literally rise up to heaven? Don't think about it. And then he swallowed a sword. I don't think he swallowed. And Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. You're done. Get off the stage. Now here's the guy that kicked him off the stage. The guy that run the event. Drama! Tell the truth on stage. Matthew 18. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If you want to say it, he can say it to me. 
I dare he say what he wants to on this stage. He better come to me so I can make sure he never gets on the stage and says what I don't want you to hear. That's in the Bible. Yeah, just hiding behind the Bible. They're such cowards. The Bible says you're not allowed to do that, okay? You might be mad at me for hosting a stripper at church, but the Bible says you're not allowed to call me out for it, okay? Why don't you guys love the Bible? Just, God damn it. They use it as a show for fucking everything. Weirdos. And then, on religious bullshit. A great example of gish galloping here, folks. This woman used to be an atheist, uh-huh, until science led her to God. All right, I'm going to try to uh, dissect this ridiculous gish gallop. I was actually an atheist before I was a Christian. Bullshit. I do not believe you. You're a fucking liar. Continue. Here's why I'm a Christian. Because okay. to be an atheist, you have to take a trillion times a trillion things on faith. No, I don't. I don't take anything on faith. Faith is the belief without evidence. I don't take anything uh, without evidence. Okay? If I don't have evidence of something, I simply hold no belief in it. Like, I have not seen any evidence for God, therefore I don't hold a belief in it, which makes me atheist, right? That takes zero faith. Just like you don't believe in Santa Claus, right? Does it take any faith for you not to believe in Santa Claus? No. You see no evidence Santa Claus exists, uh, so you don't believe in it. Easy. Like, why the Earth is a perfect distance from the sun and the rotation and the moon and the tides. And okay, this has nothing to do with being an atheist. Now, the answer to this is there's like an infinite number of planets, and so, yes, uh, odds are, on a very few of them, that would be the right distance from the sun to sustain life. But none of this requires a belief of the biblical God anyway. Let's say a God did make the earth a specific difference from the sun and revolve around to where it can sustain life. That is 0% evidence of the biblical God existing. Evolution of the primordial soup and this thing. No, nope, none of that. Belief in evolution uh, does in no way prove the Bible is true. Even if we found evidence against evolution tomorrow, that would still be zero evidence for the Bible. He had to survive so this thing could evolve into this thing, and the Big Bang, and the dust had to land here and then form into this. That's so many assumptions and presuppositions that you have to take on. It's not. It's just what the evidence says is true. But if there were evidence tomorrow that says it's not true, I would have no problem believing what the new theories are and moving on. Still doesn't prove a biblical God. Faith and believe in to get where we got. But Occam's razor, which is science. Occam's razor is not science. It, it is a, a method, but it's not science. Tells us the simplest thing is true. God did it. It's No, it's that's not what Occam's razor says. It's all things considered. The simplest solution is usually the correct one, but not always. Can't even get that right. Dumb as dumb can fucking be. And then, last but not least, why are right-wing pastors so eager to align themselves with Donald Trump? I bet you can't guess the answer. But there was somebody watching in another state, and uh, they said, this is what they told me. They said, the only reason we are now, and this, these people have given tens of millions of dollars to our ministry. Tens of millions of dollars. Because Donald Trump was on his show, they gave him tens of millions of dollars. I can't even pay my fucking taxes. It's so depressing. Since then, since, night, uh, since 2020, they said the only reason we watched was because anybody that Donald Trump wanted to watch, <laughs> we said we've got to see who that is. Yeah, we're already dipshit cult members, and we would do anything Trump tells us to do. And so he watched you, and now we are cult members of you. Oh, come on here. Come on here. If you get some courage, Pastor, God will pay your bills. We're debt free. We owe nothing to nobody. If you get some courage. Yeah, if you'll suck Trump's dick, other idiots will give you lots of money. If you lie, you betray everything you believe in, and you're willing to con people out of every penny they have, you too can be wealthy, dickheads. Burn it all down. And that is my religious bullshit. Weird. Of course, they're all fucking weird. Weird carnies. But it's lucrative. If you're willing to be a giant piece of shit, uh, this world will reward you handsomely. Believe me. 
All of it is mathematically proven. True story. But even if it wasn't, that would not prove the biblical God is real. That's for sure. Money. It's all about money. Always easy one to call. Super brain dead. You got it. All right, let's move along, folks. We're going to do a, uh, oh, we're almost to the end. All right, we're going to do, the palate cleanser should be down here. All right, we're going to do an OK Boomer first, followed by a one hero, followed by some palate cleansers. So, show almost over. Get your super chats in. But for now, it's time for, sing along if you know the words. OK Boomer, go towards the light. Boomer, go towards the light. Go towards the light. Just do it. Okay, Go towards boomer. the light, Grandma! Just do it! First off, apparently this uh, big fat white lady, I'm sorry, uh, is in Mexico. And she has rented um, the public outdoor space to watch the eclipse in, which I guess uh, is a thing. Not really. Um, I don't know what con man sold you the rights to the uh, public space, but you should get your money back. Anyway, here she is forbidding the local Mexican children for standing in public and watching the eclipse. Have some respect, little kid, from this white woman. She owns that area. Please leave our private event. There is extra space over here. Yeah, little kid. Fuck you. We're America. We own this place. And why do they want people to hate them? You know, the sun. Can you respect? Can you respect this interview, please? If you do can it over there, absolutely. No, but no. not here. Mm -hmm. And we've said we we signed a contract. Mira, mira, mira. You do not have permission to film me. You do not have permission <laughs> to. <laughs> to <laughs> cross. Oh shit! Private. If only anybody cares. It's public. It's, it's, public. it's public. It's a public space. No tiene autorización. This. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God. No, white people. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I reject my Americanness. I reject my whiteness. I reject everything. I'm not with these assholes. I'm sorry, Mexico. And uh, that. I'm sure you guys saw this one. This went super viral. This old bitch won't move her legs. So this kid has to step over her. And then she kicks the kid. Got her leg up. Kids just trying to get by. He's like, okay, I guess I'll step over you. He steps over her and then she kicks him. Oh. I'm 11 year old, you're 80. Get a life. <laughs> I like it. I'm 11 year old, you're 80. Get a life. Yeah, tell that bitch. God damn it. They're all, oh, they're miserable. Just die already. Like if you're too angry with the world to live in it just go towards the light just do it and last but not least okay folks this might not be an okay boomer video this is more of an old person having a, a mental health issue but i gotta put something in this category right so uh here is a crazy old man getting tasered two an officer was on routine patrol when he observed a man who was walking in the middle of the road have any idea on you yeah can I see you, I'm please? walking through. I, you ain't got no reason to mess yeah, with me. Yeah, I, I do. No, you don't. I have a seat right there, okay? I'll I tell own you. the police. Okay. I hold the rights to all okay. police. If you pull that, okay. I swear to God, the military will gun your <laughs> ass down. I <laughs> own the police. I Sit. pay your salary. Sit down right now. I'm going to tell you why I'm contacting you, okay? CCU Temple Patrol. Show me out with a white you man. Can't, you can't arrest me anyway. I'm I'm the I'm fucking sovereign. Sovereign. Bank sovereign citizen, y'all. Sovereign. You can't John arrest Young. me anyway. Can't sit arrest him. He owns the police. Sit down. If you, if you sit down you're right going, now. You're, you're, like, sit down. They're going to kill you and your family. Got to kill your own family. I'm the goddamn master commander of the United States Armed Forces. 
He's the master and roll of the world. Sid Vicious. Master Commander, United States Armed Forces, boy, you're gonna die. All you pump trainers and insurgents are gonna die. I hold the rights to police, boy. I hold the goddamn United States Department of Justice. I hold it. I hold it, boy. Be quiet before you get tased. If you tase me. Boy, I swear yeah. to God, if you listen take to me, if you do it, listen to me. Don't listen do it. To me. I own the he owns I'm you. Boss. I'm the last of the planet. Sir, sit down. Fuck you. Fuck you. Sit down, sir. Fuck Hit you. It. Hit it. That's what you'll do. You'll die. You'll die. Sit down, sir. Instantly. Instant death. You ain't got no reason to be messing with me. None. Sit down. Right None. Down. Sit down. Get off me, man. Get off me. I'm going to tase you, sir. No, you're not. No, you're yes, not. Uh-uh. No, Oh, uh, he did it! No! Oh, you was wrong. Gotta say, you was wrong with that one. That's one for the cop right there. What did we learn? Yeah. Crazy! Crazy as shit! Too bad Ronald Reagan shut down all the mental institutions. And that is my OK Boomer. And let's go ahead and move along, folks, since we're already almost uh, two hours and 30 minutes into the show. Uh, let's do a couple... Well, let's do the heroes first. I got one hero for you guys, but I'm going to play the intro anyway because it's amazing. Billy Bowie! We could be heroes just for one day. hero tonight taylor swift tay tay rejected nine million dollars to perform in dubai and hell yeah everybody should be doing this nobody should be performing for these fucking terrorists the people who did not 11 i know it's not dubai that's saudi arabia same it's basically the same shit it's like their little brother it's all the same to me i'm from mississippi anyway good on you tay tay appreciate you being a hero and then I got a couple palate cleansers for you guys. Prepare to be cleansed, my children. First off, this raccoon found an awesome way to amuse himself. This went super viral. Did you guys see this one? 13 million views. He's like, wee! Best day ever. I'm going to climb up in this tunnel over and over again and just fall to the ground. Never had more fun in my wee! Never had more fun in my life. Again, again. Yay! I mean, that looked fun to me, but I ain't no fucking raccoon. Whatever he finds exciting works for me. You go, raccoon! Cute as shit. And then last one for tonight, folks. Uh, get out of here on a good note. This also went super viral. The stylist using his talents to transform looks and lives, making these women feel better about themselves. No music, anyway. And the boom! Nice! Hell yeah! Looks a million times better! Dude's amazing! She's like, what you gonna do? What? No! Killed it! Nice short hair! Crying! She's like, I'm beautiful! You are beautiful! She's like, my hair is all fried! What can you do? I don't feel beautiful! Oh, you know! Look! What? Hell yeah! You go, girl! Glow up! Too much purple! Who did that to you, Grandma? Oh, way better. Hell yeah, rock that white. He making everybody's hair short, but I like it. Nice. Feeling beautiful. What are you going to do with this lady? She ain't got... Oh, what? Is that a wig? Holy crap. She got more hair now. Look, looks like a different human being. How is that even happening? What just happened? Transmogrified. Uh oh, got some dreadlocks going on. Oh, yeah. oh, that's bright. Still looks better. Ooh, that's also bright. Why? Black ladies like a lot of color in there. Ooh, wow! Holy crap! What an improvement! All right, her hair fry. You did too much. Oh, nice! Make it all short. Cut that shit off. He is good. Oh, she balding. I bet they're gonna put a wig on her. Yo, what? Looks 30 years younger. Hell yeah! Gonna be expensive to keep that shit, but looking good today. I love it. Make you feel good, your bones. No matter how much evil there is in the world, there sure is a lot of love, a lot of kindness out there. And as always, got to hold on to it the best we can. 
And all right, folks, uh, gonna do an act, gonna do a after party right now after the show, and we got all this stuff to cover. Um, got that article I saw about True Social about the cult members saying it's their uh, basically their faithful duty to lose money for Donald Trump. Got all kinds of stuff. You're not gonna want to miss it. So if you're not a patron, go sign up for my patron. Please help me out. I would appreciate it. Thank you in advance. And all right, gonna read the super chats and do a kitty party real quick. So if you bail out, please hit the like button. Join me on Wednesday, where I win another episode of the World's Greatest Show. Dusty, you owe us for Friday. No mercy, no forgiveness. Hey, I did it. We did a two and a half hour show. We did overtime and everything. And Agent Orange, we did all. It's very generous. Thank you, Agent Orange. Some more socialism for keeping it real and deriding those who try and use performative politics to justify atrocity. I hate these motherfuckers who want to be cult light for Democrats while Democrats are being just as evil right now as Republicans are. I cannot stand that shit. You could use your time and your words for anything and to use it to prop up child murderers. It's disgusting. I don't want fans like that. I want fans that stand up for truth. Anyway, I won't start on the whole tangent, but appreciate you, Agent Orange. Very generous. Love you, uh, you the man, and uh, five, five uh, cult dusty memberships from Jason Ashby. Thank you for your socialism. Everybody give love to Jason Ashby. Veggie Algro, five dollars, taxes paid for CDC, Department of Agriculture, Social Security, etc. You are needed here, speaking truth to power. I mean, I don't mind paying my local state taxes and everything, but the thought of any of my taxes going to kill children. I know they go to other shit too, but I mean, it's like they're separating them. It's not like they're dividing my taxes out and only going for good shit. They are still using it to kill children. I'd rather it not go. If I had my choice to whether it could go to none of this shit, including none of the child murders, then that's what I would choose. Because if they have to kill children in order to pay for the Department of Agriculture, CDC, or Social Security, fuck all that. All that can burn to the goddamn ground as far as I'm concerned. That's not enough for me. It's not enough for me to be willing to pay for child murder just so we have less rat poop in our corn or whatever the fuck, I guess. Yeah, man, let's go $5. Protesters blocked I-5 heading into uh, C-Tech. I saw that. Watched it for hours today. Sad to see commenters more annoyed at the inconvenience than in support of the movement. Yeah, I saw one of the senators say we should throw them off the bridge. Advocating violence, of course. Dave, listen to quiet tonight, Dusty. I know it's so fucking hard covering this horror, but we must. No matter how much pain we feel in our hearts, it is nothing care to pain each beautiful, innocent child, broken body. I know, like, I'm so ashamed. Like, I really am ashamed that that I filed my taxes. I know it's stupid, and I, I don't want to cry over it because it feels like I feel like I was doing that. But I, man, I'm not even kidding. I'm not faking it. It's hard to think that. What I earned on this show, some of it, even if it's a dollar, even if it's 10 cents, some of what I earned on this show is going to go to bombs that are going to murder children. How do you live with that? How? How do you live with that? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to work it out. But it ain't fucking easy. And, you know, and it's easy for me to say because I'm sitting here safe. I'm not the one being bombed. I'm not the one watching my family's die and everything. So it's easy for me to sit here and cry about it and whine about it, which is kind of pathetic, I know, but still, that's how I feel. And thank you, Dave. I appreciate you. It means a lot. And the fact that, you know, there are other people that feel the same way and that are in this with me it makes it a lot easier to get through. And Dave, you're lucky that you're, like, not from America and you don't have to, like, live knowing your tax dollars are directly going to that kind of shit. Free Palestine, what up, BBC? Using your picture, man. Thanks for sending it to us. You just realize we have no power other than our voices. I mean, that's not true, though. I, I could not pay it. I could go to prison, and I could be uh, a leech on the system because they'd have to pay to house me and feed me. Instead of paying money into the system, I'm, ha I'm helping break the system down by being a political prisoner. I could do that. That is a choice. It's not a good choice, but I could do that if I was courageous enough, if I was brave enough, if I was selfless enough, but I'm not because I'm not good enough to do that. That's 
That's the fucking truth. No reason to lie to myself about it. Agent Orange, doing my part to support the Dustmeister. Just tune in after a busy day. You deserve this money. Hey, appreciate you, Agent Orange. Agent Orange rocks. Everybody loves Agent Orange. It really means a lot, Agent. I appreciate you. And Socialist 5. Did I already read those? I already read those. But still, amazing Socialist. I appreciate you and appreciate everybody. MJ, $10. Love you, MJ. Thank you for joining me tonight. And thank you for everybody who donated. You're very generous tonight, and I appreciate you. I'm sorry for missing Friday's show, but hey, we made up for it. We had a great show tonight. We rocked it out. And now let's finish it out. Yeah, you know what time it is? You know what time it is. Time for a kitty party. And let's play a little butt ponies to play us out with. Folks, join me. Going to be back on Wednesday. Going to do it. Uh, so make plans. Come hang on the 8 p.m. Central. 9 Eastern. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the World's Greatest Show. If you're not a patron, please head over to my patron. We're going to do the after party right now. We have another like 30 minutes of content. So if you want more, you can have it. And there are hundreds of hours of additional content on my patron. So go sign up. Help us all out. Love it, you guys. I will see you on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. You guys have a good Tuesday. I'll see you soon. And as always, so next time, Logic. Fuck yes. Good night, y'all. We got a pretty boy, Violet, half stash. And we got the two kitties, Precious and uh, Piper. They're getting fat. Look how big Precious is. She like a got a big old butt. Precious got a big old butt. I know I said I'd always be true, but Precious got a big old butt, so I'm leaving you. See ya! Jeff Young, Free Palestine, Real Men Cry Dusty, I agree. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. Sometimes I got no choice. Sometimes the world is just too hard. And of course, uh, tears lower your stress level. They have chemicals in them, so multi-purpose. Love you guys. Good night. Leave comments! Like and subscribe. Switch over now.